Hello and welcome to episode 97 of the Paropod with your boys, myself, Owen, and you across the room from me, Mark. Yo. It's me. <laughs> it's your boy. We're back. We're back we are, again. We are back once again with our recommended film episode. Later on in this episode, we will be talking about 1988 Martin Scorsese, The Last Temptation of Christ, starring Willem Dafoe. Ooh. Uh, this is a long ass summary, but it's about Jesus. <laughs> it's about <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler. Also, yeah, we won't spoil the ending. Yeah, we won't. <laughs> It's a spoiler-free episode. Yeah, we won't talk about the ending. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty yeah, fucked up. It's about up. Jesus and his life and the temptations of, of, of Christ. Of being Jesus, yeah. You know, I would have been tempted. I would have been tempted. I too would have boned Mary Magdalene. Yeah. <laughs> you see her? <laughs> yeah, stop. She's a hottie in that movie. Stop. <laughs> How you been, Mark? I've been good, I've been good. You had a disaster on the weekend, though, didn't you? I did. I had a bit of a rough um, Saturday. We went to the beach. Obviously, it was, not, it was amazing weather. As I'm sure everyone's listened to this, also listened to the last episode, um, and we were talking about how amazing the weather was. Seen Scorchio, as it Davo was, would say. It was El Fuego out there. <laughs> <laughs> it was hot. It was so hot. I got a bit of a burn. Um, but yeah, we went to the beach just to make the most of it, me and Orla, and we went down to uh, Black Rock Beach just because it made more sense mm. in terms of geographic kind of proximity. Um, I've never been to Black Rock, and it's fucking weird. I don't know anyone that goes to Black Rock Beach. Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, well, like it's it, people in work go to it, so I was like, I'd never heard of the beach. Mm. Sea Point, Sea Point Beach. It's quite nice, like really nice, mm. really nice beach compared to Do- like, but like you know, we're, you know, our experience is like Dolly Mountain, you know, that like shit beach and Hoth. This might be a stupid question. Is Black Rock near a dart station? Like, sh- is yeah, Sea Point is a dart station. Oh, yeah, I didn't yeah, know that either, yeah. but um, it is a dart station. So, but the dart weren't the darts weren't running on like. The only weekend in the entire year when the weather would be good enough for people to be like moving around to the city to, to go to the beach. Classic like that. Dublin. It's like actually we're not going to run the dart yeah. this weekend. What the fuck? It made no sense. Anyway, we're in Black Rock and it's a weird, weird place. It reminds you of uh, the town in At World's End, where everyone's <laughs> kind of like a, a an alien. <laughs> everyone's an alien. It, it just it's really weird. They only had one off license and it was like a wine cellar. So you walked in and it was just wines. Like they had two fridges, two tiny fridges. And uh, they're just selling like single cans of Heineken for three quid, um, and everything else is like either wine, um, like expensive wine, or like IPAs. And uh, I ended up getting like a Rock Shandy IPA mix. Ooh. It was, uh, it was the worst thing about it was it was completely unremarkable. It didn't yeah. taste like either an IPA or it t- just tasted like a kind of gone off lager. I was gonna say because that could either be really nice or really fucking awful. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it it was really neither. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I was expecting an experience oh, for for three euro for like one of those small cans. Yeah, um, that's the thing about IPAs; they get you fucked. Oh my God, they're so expensive. Oh yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. We, anyway, we we spent ages hunting this off license down, and uh, <laughs> then eventually we just like we left. <laughs> <laughs> we left, and uh, straight away I lost my wallet. Straight away, I don't know like what happened. I, I, I thought I heard someone call my name. I turned around. I was like, there's no one there. Mm. I, I kept walking. I was like, it must have been that time. But it's like 10 minutes later, someone calls me. Um, oh, no. I was like, where's my wallet? And I was like, oh, I was starting to panic. I was the like, panic. oh, my God. Because oh. I never I never lose stuff like that. Yeah. Like, I, I've never lost my phone. I do. Touch wood. Uh, I've never, like, I never lose my wallet. Anything like that. Like that. Um, and I was like, oh, my God. How have I done this? Because I was wearing shorts, like the swim shorts. Yeah, yeah. It's like the, with the shallow pockets. So I was like, oh, too easy. Fuck, fuck. It's too easy. As I was searching my bag. My phone starts ringing. I was like, and there's this guy. He's like, eh, we have your wallet. And I was like, oh my God, that's that's incredible. <laughs> hey, oh my God, man. I Thank like, you. You're so kind. And we walked back, got the wallet, came, went off to the beach, uh, met a girl you, we used to work with um, as we were going down there. And she's like, oh yeah, it's it's kind of getting a bit colder now, but um, sure, it's low tide. So the it's it's nice to kind of paddle around the water. And I was like, oh, that's that's grand. Like not thinking. Like it was around seven o'clock at this stage. I forgot like basic law of physics. The, the, the tide comes in at night. Yeah. Completely forgot about that. We sat, we sat down on, like, uh, this little kind of, like, promenade thing, like, mm. in front of the beach, and we're, like, chilling there for a while, had a can, then we're, like, oh, we'll go dip in the water, because it's getting colder, and it's kind of, like, the, the, the sun was setting. Yeah. 
Um, so we went down to the to the the beach. And it's like a proper beach with sand, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like you don't you don't have to have like fucking sea shoes to walk <laughs> around like the the whole beach. You don't need fucking studs walking through that. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't need fucking predator boots. Yeah, <laughs> but um, so yeah, we we brought all our stuff down and like uh, we just left it at the shoreline. Like in a on like a, like a like a plastic bag, mm-hmm. so it didn't get all sandy. Because we're like, oh, I don't want this stuff to get sandy. And uh, we went out, and like, it was low tide technically at that point, because the tide was coming in. It was in the process of coming in, but I hadn't. Tide come in. comes in fast in horses. Yeah, that whatever it, that saying is. It it really really does. Yeah, it does. We went out. We're, we we were at least we were a kilometer out, and it was still knee deep. Mm. We're like, what the fuck? And then the waves it's like. Sl- sl- we suddenly got hit by like a big wave and they're getting bigger and bigger and like there's more frequently and we're like oh this is pretty cool like it's getting a bit yeah it's getting like, deeper it's getting deeper I was like but what a, what about the stuff at the shoreline I was saying to Orla she said no no it's low tide and I was like yeah that's, yeah, that's, what, <laughs> that's, that's true it is low tide <laughs> it's low tide <laughs> and uh, we, had, we had great fun it was so beautiful like the scenery is incredible and it was like a, there was no clouds in the sky it's, like what time is that at? it was like half seven yeah seven half seven ooh it was beautiful. Like the sky was kind of turning purple. Mm. You could see, you could see Clontarf. You could see like the the smokestacks. You could see everything. Done Leary Harbour, just like to the right. Uh, it, it was amazing. I uh, went for a wee swim. And uh, about twenty minutes later, we we're like, "Oh, we'll head back to shore." Uh, our chatter was coming back, but like the entire time, I'm like looking to where I think the bag should be. Yeah. And the closer we get, like the less we're talking. Because we're just like staring and like hoping that the the things appear staring on the horizon. At a, an empty space. Yeah, we're like, where the fuck is this stuff? <laughs> yeah, it turns out the tide, <laughs> the tide had come in, which it, you know it's prone to do at night, and uh, it took everything that we had. It took everything that we had. All our stuff was gone. It floated away. This uh, is the second time I've heard this story, and it's still really funny. <laughs> but um, so this is the third time because you told me this in the weekend as well. Oh yeah, yeah, but. Yeah, we were like walking around and it was like, a, it was like, I don't know what to even compare it to. You know, you're walking around in the aftermath of a disaster. It was I, like, I can't I, believe that on the day that you lost your, your wallet, which is like, oh, fuck, that's one thing. Yeah, and which then I it, never do. And then it never multiplied do. by 10 later yeah. on that day. Because <laughs> it was like the, the relief of like finding my wallet. I was like, oh, thank God I can relax at the beach. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden I'm plunged into my worst nightmare and it's just like the kind of the aftermath. And I'm just kind of trying to, I'm trying to come to terms with the fact that I've lost everything. And yeah. all I have is what's on my fucking, my, my, butt, shorts. my ass. Like all I have is my shorts <laughs> yeah. and there's no other way to get home. I've no wallet, I've no phone, I've no, I've nothing. I, I like my work badge and all in that, in that bag. Uh, like I had everything in that bag and Orla had all her stuff in her clothes and like, um, oh, it was a nightmare. But then people came over and like, oh, did you, were you looking for your bag? And I was like, oh my God, I've never been so relieved in my entire life. The people of Black Rock pulling yeah. through twice. Yeah, I was got, I was slagging them, and I slagged them as soon as I started this story. But at the same time, they like saved my yeah. ass twice <laughs> <laughs> in about two hours. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they're very nice. They, they it had floated off, and um, someone seen it. I went out, grabbed it, I brought it back and put it on the rocks. Mm. Um, and I was so like I, I ran over to the bags like as, like they weren't going anywhere. But yeah. I was like, oh, I was just relieved to have them. I cut up my feet <laughs> running because I was like, I ran onto the rocks. Uh, but yeah, I found all my stuff. So uh, it was a happy ending. Yeah, we still had to go home. Everything was soaked. Everything was like it's like sopping wet. I had to mm. go home like a sopping wet uh, t-shirt. All, all like my change of clothes were all gone as well. You know, um, so I just had to brave it on the bus, a packed bus, like absolutely soaking wet. Oh, I like. Nine o'clock at night. It was just, um, but you know, we were buoyed by the spirit of uh, the kind of you know what could have been. Yeah, you know, so it made things. Ten- mm. I could tolerate whatever. You know, there was an alternate. I could have got, got hopped alter- on on the way home. I'm like, ah, oh, forget about yeah. it. <laughs> there was an alternate universe there that was so much worse. Yeah, like yeah. you in a different timeline, fucked up way worse. Yeah, I was like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Jesus, the last temptation of of Mark. <laughs> You know, but um, oh fuck it up. So I saw the alternate timeline. I was like, I have to be grateful for what I have. Yeah, no, I yeah, that's so fucking. I haven't done anything like that, but like, I think I've gotten to the age now, and I can't believe I've hit it at the ripe age of twenty three, where when I'm walk when I'm going to the beach, I'm looking up the tide and I'm checking to see 
Really? Oh, I did it. I I d- I've never thought of that. I did it last time when I was going to the beach. I was like, on my phone, I was like, oh, when's tide coming down? I was like, oh, yeah, grand. So by the time we're at the beach, it would be like near enough to high tide. Oh, not like, because high tide is like three o'clock in the morning. So it wasn't going to be that. Mm. I was like, oh, it'll be like getting deeper anyway, at the very least. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't believe I've turned into that man already, which is very sad. But anyway. I'll have to start <laughs> doing that as well. I Listen, know, it's I go to the beach to, once a year. It's handy to have one person that knows on the top what the story of the tide yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, low tide, because I was like, the moon, the moon pulls the sea towards it. Mm. So surely, but then I was like, that's making sense. How does that? Is that? Li- is it literally? It's, how does that work? That is, yeah, yeah. Is it the, the gravity of the moon? Pulls is it the gravity? The sea. Yeah, 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 mad. It also distends <laughs> the actual planet Earth, like the crust itself. Um, like pulls towards it, it, yeah. Pulls towards the moon, yeah. What a little bit, it's yeah. Not, obviously, it's not, a yeah. Bit. It's not like hugely noticeable. It doesn't turn into an oval, you know. Yeah. But it does distend. That's mad. That side I didn't of the earth. That. Yeah, it's mad. But I obviously, for, I forgot all these things when I was walking out to that beach. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're too excited. Yeah, because I, I could see the moon. I was like, ah, oh, wow, that's so pretty. The moon, the sun. Little did I know, you know, mm. I was in the eye of the hurricane. Disaster. <laughs> you see the way um, that you can see the moon during the day and stuff like that. Mm. So cool. Again, this is probably this is probably a stupid question. I've asked like two somewhat stupid questions. Mm. Why? Why can you see them? I thought, okay, not that I thought that the moon only comes out at night because obviously, <laughs> obviously, I've seen it during the day. But mm. like, you never see it at like three o'clock in the day. So, at what stage does the moon start to orbit around where we are, and? Countering that point, is it possible that at night time there actually isn't any moon because it's on the other side of the world at that stage? I don't think so, no. Surely it doesn't follow night, though, if you know what I mean. Like, surely there's somewhere, like, surely at one point at some time in Earth's history, it was nighttime somewhere, and it was like, you know, no clouds in the sky, but you couldn't see the moon because the moon was... Uh, orbiting on the other side of the world mm. surely that can happen it might have been yeah but i think that's like the nature of like that it's like it's there's a thing called tidal lock so the moon is like i think it's like a double lock in place where the like the the earth pulls on the moon keeps it fixed in one place so it's constantly it's it's like it sounds like it's it's uh it would almost be artificial mm. but that's just the reason like if it, if it was any different you wouldn't have um, the changing of the tides, you wouldn't have seasons. Seasons would be completely different as well if the moon wasn't um, properly kind of located on yeah. the opposite side of the... Like, nighttime wouldn't be properly nighttime because you need the moon for loads of things at night, you know? Mm. Does the moon, or- moon orbit the Earth, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Is it spinning in the same direction that we are or in the opposite direction? What do you mean? Like, you know the way that we spin around oh, yeah, yeah. the sun at a certain... In one direction. Yeah. Does the moon orbit us in the opposite direction? So, like, we're spinning, you know, clockwise mm. to the to the sun. And then is the moon going around us anti-clockwise? I have no idea. Yeah, man. Well, it's space. There's no, there's no up or yeah, down, no, man. That's it, right. Mm. You know that fucking thing of, like, when you see, um, like, a diagram of, uh, of, the, of the solar system? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, and I never thought about this before, but obviously that's not like <laughs> that is not how the Milky Way is set up. Mm. We're in the Milky Way, yeah. The Milky Way isn't the set solar up the way. Yeah, yeah the, our solar our solar system. Yeah, the Milky Way is the galaxy. Is mm. that a galaxy? Yeah, 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 yeah. So our solar system. What's the name of our solar system? The solar system. Just the solar system. That's the main one, like. <laughs> ah, look at us, fucking <laughs> center. Is that Eurocentric bullshit? Yeah, 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 we call it the moon. <laughs> There's loads of moons. Earth, yeah, the moon. Which one, dumbass? <laughs> 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 the sun. Which one, dumbass? There's loads of suns. Yeah. In the yeah. Um. So, like, in our, in the solar system, uh, they're not set up in a fucking straight line. Like, they're moving like up, up above us, below us, like all around us. And I was like, mm, totally different planes of movement. Yeah, yeah, I was like, obviously, like, I, I, like that's so obvious that I never thought about it before. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's hard to depict on maps and stuff. But like, um, I think it's Uranus, um, lol, which has a uh, an, <laughs> elli- an elliptical orbit. Mm. So it 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 goes in like a. That way, yeah. like kind of up and a- down. above, yeah. you know, if you think about it, above the sun and we go like kind of around horizontally. Yeah. Um, it, it could be Neptune or like Uranus or something, but one of them has like a weird orbit. 
and they all have obviously slightly different orbits to us. Um, and there's like times obviously when, um, like <clears throat> if there was to be a Mars mission, there's a certain time when we're closer to Mars, mm. not based on just the road, like the actual orbits themselves, but like the actual, the uh, just kind of the relation between the two different planets, you yeah. know, like how, like the relation between their orbits themselves, you know. Um, so w- when it'd be closer, but there's 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 certain points when Mars is just like completely impossible. It'd be at its closest point in an orbit, but mm. it'd be completely impossible to get to. Mad, you know, just because of the way it works. Space is complicated. It is shockingly. Yeah, so. forget about space. Basically, yeah. you know, we're not gonna find out. Yeah, about no, all this stuff, you forget know? about it. Yeah, leave it to the eggheads. Will we ever find aliens? No. <laughs> <laughs> what if aliens came down to us? Hmm. Do you think that's possible? Yes. Yes. Nope. I saw oh, Nope this weekend. Debunked. <laughs> <laughs> I went to go see the new Jordan Peele movie, Nope, starring Daniel Kaluuya. Mm. Um, <clears throat> Any good? Um, fuck yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is my movie of 2022. Ah, stop. This thing. Stop. This thing. What about Texas Chainsaw? Because <laughs> <laughs> my, <laughs> my, my, my movie of the year was or or or. Oh yeah, yeah. But mm. nope, man. You gotta go see this film. Mm. My mom actually watched Aura or she didn't like it. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> <laughs> but, a, uh, you gotta get you gotta get real dumb to appreciate that movie. No, nah, nah, I, I feel like I should watch it. But it's three hours. But yeah, nope. It's so long. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah. So like <clears throat> with Jordan Peele films, this is his third one. Um. I like get up or get up. Fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> I like get out. <laughs> I like get out, and um, but like I don't love get out. I think it's very good, and you know, obviously, it's like it, the subtext of all you know. It, it's, I won't even say it's subtext in this film. It's, it's just literally just it's about racism. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Twilight Zone subtext. It's just the text, <clears throat> um, and then us, which I do like and I do think is a good film. But I think the subtext in that film makes fuck all sense. Like, it's just like, it doesn't feel like, like, it's like, if you start to think about it, it begins to, like, not be very clear and be kind of muddled. Mm. Emo. Um, so there's, like, two films from Jordan Peele where, like, where, like, no, or, uh, Get Out was, like, fairly, you know, easy subtext to read into us has like some subtext still like two very good films but like us just not as good um and like i don't think it's like there's something about like i haven't seen us in a, or in a very long time but that do you ever see us no i've never seen it's a ballet scene in that film that is fucking class it's so good yeah. but um like the whole like the scares and stuff like that i didn't find it a very scary film or anything like that and then it's subtext isn't that very good but it's still like you know it's still a good movie but like you know it's nothing major mm. um and so for Nope, I was like, uh, I don't know, like, what to think about this film based on like the previous two films. So they were sitting there in the f- in the cinema, and like, very. I'm not going to go into major spoilers about this film, but like minor spoilers for this film, particularly like one. I want to talk about one thing that's in the film that's like it's not that it's not major to the plot, but like it is. Like, there's a monkey in this film, and I need to talk about. I need to talk about Gordy. Jesus fucking Christ, Gordy! He's I need in the trailer, isn't he? Oh my god, I need to talk about Gordy. Yeah. Um, so the film like starts, and uh, it's like you know building up or whatever, and then it starts. It's an alien invasion film, basically. Mm. Like people are being abducted. You love? I love those movies. You are gonna love this film. I love I think. alien invasion. Like there's a bit of a twist on the alien invasion like thing mm. in this film. What's the twist? Uh, again, that's I'm not going to spoil it. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like a big part of the film. Oh, okay, it's okay. like a major like team in the film as well. Mm. But there's like a couple different things going on in the film. And it does them all very well. Very well. This film is about spectacle. More Basically, like the main theme from the film is about spectacle. Um, the, so- the flying saucer in this film is a big old eye. Mm. It's just a big eye that people can't stop looking at. And there's this thing about trying to capture spectacle and chasing spectacle and, like, risking your life to get the perfect shot and stuff like that. Like, basically, towards the end of the film, they are not concerned with beating the aliens. Mm. They just want to get a fucking photo of it. Mm. All right, and use that, like, they're like, we, we want to get that Oprah shot. 
We want to get a photo that's yeah, going to get us on Oprah. Like, that's what they're chasing. They don't really care about, like, defeating it. Yeah. Defeating it is, like, a fucking, like, uh... Side quest. A side quest. It's like, <laughs> maybe you could beat it, but the main thing is we want to get a photo of it. Mm. Um, and all the characters are just driven by this to, like, get to, like, just capture spectacle. And there's, like, some characters have, like, Stephen Young's character um, has really dark trauma over like tv shows and like having a spectacle on the tv shows because when he was a kid he had gordy it was called gordy's house was the tv show that he was on as a kid mm. but then the film not actually Stephen chen <laughs> or Stephen young even mm. and um gordy was a, a chimp that they had on the tv show and um it was a tv show where like it was Gordy's house. It was like, you know, fucking the family with a monkey and, you know, shenanigans ensue. And uh, one day, when they're shooting, the f- when they're, you know, shooting on sets with a- in front of a live audience, a balloon pops and Gordy snaps. Mm. And he fucking mauls two people and heavily dif- disfigures one girl. Mm. I am not joking when I say that that like did when I was watching that scene, I was like, We need a horror film based on monkeys. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Man <Clip> that. yeah, <laughs> that's, <good. laughs> that's so good. We need a horror film based on monkeys. Oh man, it's so fucking scary. Yeah. Does uh, he show it? Is he a big chimp like? He no, he's just like he's not a big chimp. He's like he's just a big He's is he wearing a t shirt and stuff. He's wearing a t shirt, he's wearing I think he's wearing dungarees, like <laughs> but like he like <clears throat> it really captures like how fucking scary chimps are. Mm. Like, I'm, he's, he's not like a big chimp. Like, he's a small chimp. But, like, those fuckers are so strong. If they latch onto you, you can't do anything. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's over. <laughs> like, you're, it's game over if they yeah. get onto you. And, like, he, it doesn't, like, show him, like, you know, eating these people's faces or anything like that. But, like, it's from Stephen Young's perspective and he's hiding underneath the uh, a table and gordy's just like after getting up and he has blood all over his face mm. and hands and he's just like acting like a chimp you know whatever mm. and you're just like that holy fuck like just <laughs> it just conveys like this wild animal just going ham going ham on three Chimping people out. Yeah. Going ape. Going <laughs> ape. Yeah. yeah. Um, who could have thought? Who could have thought? <laughs> and like, it just, and I didn't know, it's actually, th- th- it's based on the true story. That actually happened. They There was a, there was a case in the 90s, could have been the 80s, maybe, no, I think it was 90s or early 2000s, where this family uh, had a pet chimp. Mm. Uh, it was like a woman and her husband had a pet chimp and he was basically like a little local celebrity like taking photos with uh, the police and stuff like that mm. um, he's the one where he eats her face yeah, yeah. yeah. ever he, seen see the pictures of her afterwards? oh my god I was see Oprah interview afterwards um, <laughs> oh Tra- my Travis the chimp Travis yeah Travis that's the it. chimp yeah um, yeah that's that, an insane story oh my god and like that's based, that's what happens in this film is that he just snaps mm. and later on in the film you see there's like he killed the mom and the dad of the like the sitcom family and the little girl and the family you see her later on and there's like it is literally just the woman from the oprah interview like she has a veil over her face yeah and the veil like blows and you can see like little glimpses of what her face looks like it's so like yeah it looks all um yeah it just like looks, she doesn't, it doesn't have, look good it, she yeah. doesn't have like the woman in the fi- in the film is like her lip is all gone and like the woman really like, doesn't have eyes no it's eyes no, no lips no no, no nose, nose no mouth basically yeah yeah and, but she, she wasn't even she was like a mate of the person who owned the chimp yeah she was just a friend yeah, yeah. the uh, person who owned it had to kill yeah kill the chimp stab it in the back yeah no she didn't the police had to come and shoot the monkey she stabbed oh it survived didn't it yeah, yeah, yeah she hit him over the head with a with a shovel and stabbed him in the back and Terry just kept going like yeah. there was there is like there is no fucking stopping chimps <laughs> <laughs> these things are fucking mental we need like I was we need to put an end to I, these man, guys I was literally <laughs> watching the like fuck it exterminate them <laughs> yeah yeah they're a threat <laughs> the world will be a better place without these fucking things they actually plus are, we're gonna knock off, we're gonna knock off some competition for us so. yeah <laughs> upcoming competition Planet of the Apes no thank you no thanks Planet of the Orangutans mm. I think that the noble yeah the noble the, the noble yeah the silent kings I'll of the take forest. the silverback gorilla over a chimp yeah yeah exactly the wise you know they're mm. wise they're, they're big they're, they're chill the they're chill out yeah chimps are evil chimps are fucked chimps are fucking evil and this film like I, like th- that scene was so fucking scary like genuinely so fucking scary mm. 
And and the film has nothing to do with chimps. Nothing to do with chimps. <laughs> the actual aliens himself. Mm. Fuck me, man. <clears throat> I was sitting there watching this film, and because it's like it's an alien abduction kind of film. Yeah. And I was sitting there, and at a certain point, I was like, "This is basically like Jaws in the sky." Oh, right. Like this, like flying saucer, just like this. Like you need to see this film in cinemas as well. Like this is like a. Sp- <laughs> like ironic but this is a spectacle film like mm. you need to see this in the cinema purely for that sound system all right the sound design in this film like gave me chills just the noise of this thing coming after people is so scary uh it's so tense uh it looks great like all the special effects are like very good in this film mm. um but just like that flying saucer fuck me man I don't want them here. Exterminate the aliens too. Chimps and aliens. I want them all gone. <laughs> <laughs> I want them all gone. Um, yeah. Where's that film? Chimps in space. Remember that? Is that the animated one? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> What's that thing? Oh no. Pigs in space is the Muppet one. Pigs in space. Pigs in space. Yeah. It's Piggy and the boys. <laughs> Excuse me. But yeah, there's this whole like, so it's like Stephen Chen's character. I keep saying Stephen Chen. Stephen Yun. Yeah, he was Stephen Chen. I think Stephen Chen is someone. I'm going to have to cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> he is someone, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, is someone that, that, that is someone that I know. Yeah, he's, um, he's a call out. Yeah. Shout out to James Gannon. <laughs> yeah, shout out to James. Shout out to James Gannon. So I told him to do a, do a random shout out at some point. So you're getting in, in the opening 25 minutes. <laughs> Absolute legend. <laughs> King. Um, but uh, Stephen Yun's character is, um, is... Basically, he is heavily traumatized by this but the spectacle of it like and even like that woman that was on oprah she's essentially a spectacle she's something to be looked at mm. once she's on that interview like i i fucking did it like as soon as i heard that she was on oprah i was like yeah look at it i want to know what i, I want to know and mm. uh, everyone is obsessed with like just like you know looking and like you know in this film it's like what if the thing that you're looking at is looking back at you and it's like that kind of mm. horror where like the spectacle looks back and comes for you as much as you're going for it. Yeah. yeah. Um and uh so Stephen Young's character, um, you know, it's this this is like he mentions how like there's an S N L skit depicting the the Gordy incident. Mm, yeah. And uh he's made like a whole he's been able to make like basically like a whole career over the fact that he was a survivor of this. Mm. And he has, like, survivor's guilt over it. But he makes a lot of money. He's making a lot of money. Um, what can he do? And this whole... There's, like, m- multiple different layers to the film in how it, like, deals with, like, just a human obsession with spectacle. Mm. Um, it's fucking great. It's such a good film. Uh, and it's fucking scary. And it's funny. Like... I was hoping, I was like, I really hope that they do say, like, nope. And multiple times throughout the film, there's a bit where, like, Daniel Kaluuya, he's in, like, a van, and uh, the flying saucer, like, comes over top of him, and uh, he just, like, opens the car door, looks up, and just closes the door, and goes, nope. <laughs> <laughs> there's multiple times throughout the film where, like, people see something really fucked up, and they just go, nope, and just, nah. like, turn away and walk away. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out, yeah. It's, um... Oh, it's it is Jordan Peele's best film. All right, yeah, easily. But I think it's better than Get Out. Um, I think it's much better. I think it's his best made film. It's mm. his scariest film. It's the film that has the most like subtextual depth. It has basically everything that I want in a good horror film. Mm. It sounds good. It's real good. It sounds good. It's still out as well. Oh yeah, it's just out. Like it only came out on the weekend. Oh, did it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I saw it on. The second day that it came out, I think it came out. On fr- it came out on Friday. I saw it on Saturday. <laughs> cool, cool. I, I I probably have to go see that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. recommend seeing it um, in cinema. Yeah, see yeah. It at the point because you can see it in iSense, and the iSense have like real good speakers. iSense. Yeah, oh. iSense is like, um, it's not like it's basically IMAX, but like IMAX has that like very specific aspect ratio. Mm. But it's more so. I think iSense is more so to do with the uh, sound. The sound. Like, yeah. And like. You want the sound for this film. Ah, yeah. Like, when this flying saucer is coming at people, you're like, fuck that. <laughs> ah, good sound is like, yeah, you can only get that in cinemas. And it's like, when it it, duck, when it abducts people, it, like, kind of captures 
their sound i think either that or it's still the people inside it mm. and like the things going past and you just hear like screams of pain and like horror yeah oh man it's awful it sounds good <laughs> it's real good it sounds really good uh definitely because i because i know i heard about us just being everything i heard about us is just like i oh, just there's no point in me watching that because i just didn't think it'd be worth watching but like, like yeah. get out i enjoy get out yeah get out but it wasn't yeah, it wasn't anything like it didn't it didn't. Pe- people, I think pe- people kind of acted as if it changed the game. It was. Yeah. It wasn't that kind of film. It was to really good. Fair, to be fair, like it is that like the Get Out as a first time like feature length directorial debut mm. is insane. It's a good go to. Yeah, yeah it's re- it's a very good film, and mm. like I have heard that there's like certain things in Get Out that like you just wouldn't get as a white person. Like I heard that there's one thing where like um one uh, there's a bit where like Daniel Clue and Get Out like walks up to um. Is it like he's Stanfield in that film? Yeah. Yeah, he walks up to him. With the bowler cap. Yeah, with the oh. bowler cap. He just looks white as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, when he walks up to him and he gives him, he goes to like give him a handshake and like Keith Stanfield just kind of looks at him. And apparently, like, as in like, if you're like, as a black person, you're like, that is so fucked up. Because if you're the two black people in a room full of white people, you fucking shake hands and you're just like, you know, give each other a high five and be like, you know, you recognize the fact that you're like the only two black people in the room. Ah, yeah. That's we like, wouldn't have to be I, black to yeah. get that. But apparently think, that yeah. is it. Uh, well, I didn't get that at all. I was like, yeah. well, obviously it was like, oh, there's something wrong with them. But like, it's even deeper. Yeah, it's suppose. a much deeper reaction that you would get. So like, mm. Get Out's very good for that type of stuff. Not, you know, and obviously. It I'm wasn't just, a game changer. Yeah, it, yeah, it was I don't good, think it was yeah. like, I think it was a very, very good film. Mm. Uh, like, oh, I think you should watch Us because like, Us has like some subtextual stuff but the more you think about it, the more like, I don't know what the fuck this film is saying, or like, what what, what was it actually about? It's about like working class people being like the underbelly of society or something like that, and then rising up, and they all connect hands. Mm, it's a horror film. It's a horror film. Uh, yeah. yeah, I like. I'd never heard anything really solid about it. Yeah, it was all just like, this is good. It is good, but like... Yeah, but it's like, it, it was never like, oh, you have to see this, or like, it did this really well. It's like, it's, like a, it's a good film, yeah. but like, I have absolutely no idea what that film was like trying... Mm. And like, it's very, it's like, it's very clearly trying to say something. Like, I mm. feel like, like, Jordan Peele's films, like, do have subtext to them. Yeah. Like, all yeah. three of them do. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, he, he, The Twilight Zone, like... Yeah. And like, that was his thing. That yeah. was his baby. And it didn't go very well. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never tried only, to watch that, but is it? Oh, it's dog shit. Is absolutely it? terrible. Mm. But he only executive produced it. Like, oh, no. But he sought it out spe- like, specifically as a project. Yeah, he's a really fan. Like. A fan of that kind of uh, storytelling. You know? mm. Very, uh, I don't know, parable-esque, you know? Yeah. And it, I think that is like, it is like a parable, but like, I don't know what the fuck is trying to say. <laughs> not even in terms of like, is it dodgy or not? It's like, I literally just don't know what it's saying. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate that in a film, yeah. Just well, be straightforward. Especially when it's very clear. Like, like it's very obvious that it is saying something. You just don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. I don't want to be reading into these things. Yeah. Tell me what the meaning is. Yeah. What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I'll, I'll definitely try to get to see yeah. it. Nope, for nope, sure. Yeah, Nope you know? is, I think, I mean, I can't see a film being better than Nope this year. Really? Emo, yeah, Emo. Ooh. Uh, just, yeah, just like, I like, I was genu- genuinely scared. Like, it's not, I think I felt the same thing. And this is going to sound. Is this the scariest film you've seen in, I don't know. This year in cinema? Yeah, but like, oh. I haven't seen that many films this year oh, in cinema. What's the scariest film you've seen in the last five years? Oh, sorry, I said last two years since the, since we've started recording stuff. Last two years, scary God, film. What's the best horror film I've seen, or the scariest Just film? Just the, the film that make you feel scared. Oh, that's a very good question. Um, yeah. I'd have to go back on my list. Mm. Or like, would this be among them though? This would be among them. No. I like. It don't, it's not even like pure horror. It's just like tension. Mm. I genuinely. This is gonna sound corny as fuck, <laughs> but I felt like. Oh, this is what people must have felt like when they were watching Jaws in cinema for the first time. Mm. Like that, back that wasn't as corny as I thought it was going to be. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think just comparing like the, the uh, like saying like, oh, this is the next Jaws is a very like mm. hyperbolic thing to say. But like in terms of my experiences, like I can see like this made me think like, fuck yeah, I get I get that fear that people mu- must have had back then. Because mm, yeah. like when I was Jaws, I'm like 
Yeah, it's good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's Jaws, it's like... It's a fish. It's a fish. It's a big shark, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a big goldfish. <laughs> yeah, it's not that scary. But yeah, no, yeah. nope. It's Sounds good. like a yes. It's a yes. On. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, the... A yep. every, every, everyone walked out and they're like, nope. More like, dope. Nice. Nice. <laughs> uh, and I, I, silence I, I, said, I, said, I said afterwards, I was like, nope. They should have called it Don't Look Up. <laughs> and <Anyway. laughs> <laughs> You want to go see this alone? <laughs> <laughs> I just said it to the person beside me. <laughs> just ran the person. Like, hey, bro, more like Don't Look Up, am I right? <laughs> Halfway through the film. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, that's God. good. Very good. Yeah. Did you watch anything this week? Yeah, I had a look at this film called A Gnome <laughs> Named Norm. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> it's called A Gnome Named Norm. That's Norm with a G N O or M. Like Gnomeo. Yeah, like Gnomeo, that kind of pun. Um Gnomeo and Juliet must have stolen the kind of their their grift off of this. Yeah, this is a film from nineteen um um nineteen ninety or something like that. Um, let me just tell you for sure, because it's very important. Yeah, it's from 1990. Um, and it's directed by a guy called Stan Winston. He doesn't have a Wikipedia page. And, uh, <laughs> it's always <a> good <laughs> And it stars Anthony Michael Hall of Halloween Kills fame. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, those are the films he was in, Breakfast Club and stuff. Mm. Um, and he stars as a guy called Detective Casey Gallagher, who is a cop who has been disgraced. He's a LAPD or NYPD or something like that. And, one uh, of the PDs. He's one of the PDs, and he is basically disgraced, and he's thrown off a case, and uh, because he's kind of fr- fra- he's framed for some kind of crime, um, and the only way he can exonerate himself, save his career, get the girl, stuff like that, is to uh, recruit the enlist the help of a small gnome called Norm. Um, is this a, set in a magical world at all? Is it just a gnome? Just no, it's just set in the real world. world. It's just set in the real world. <laughs> it's one of those movies from the eighties that like just doesn't make any sense. Mm. It was like a buddy. It's a buddy cop film. Um, with uh, magical realist elements. Love it. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> this this gnome called Norm. He uh, he's a tunneler gnome, and uh, he looks mad fucked up. I'll show you a picture of him. Um, but basically, he's a tunneler gnome, and in the gnome culture, they have this thing where they have tunneler gnomes and they have warrior gnomes, and uh, the tunneler gnomes are just the kind of you know they're like the the working stiffs who do all the you know, mm. they they kind of they underpin the gnome society, but they don't get any of the thanks. <laughs> and to be, uh, the warrior gnomes, <laughs> 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 this is all explained in the, in the, in the film. <laughs> an extensive scene where he explains it. It's just it's it's, it's a scene where he just goes into pure exposition about uh, a culture which we never see. We only mm. ever see a uh, norm. But um, yeah, the warrior gnomes uh, do this thing. It's kind of like a mating ritual where they take a stone called a lumen and they bring it up to the up to the surface world. Um, or the top world, and they uh, they sh- they let the sun shine through the lumen, and it's like a kind of like a, a rite of passage. Mm. And so Norm is horny for this uh, <laughs> this girl gnome, and uh, he decides to uh, shake off the shackles of the tunneler lifestyle and become a warrior gnome instead. Um, Fair play to him. All right, there he is. That's Norm. <clears throat> that uh, Jesus fucking Christ! That's not what I thought it was gonna look like. <laughs> he kind of looks like one of the fairies in Labyrinth. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Um, it literally, looks like a, something from Labyrinth. Yeah, this is him in the car with uh, Anthony and Michael Hall. Oh, uh, that's they're, horrible. They're literally, it's a buddy cop comedy. But uh, I thought he would have just been like you know like a little person. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like <laughs> a full-on mythical creature. He's like, a full-on kind of fairy. Yeah, yeah he's it, got he's he, it, he's all hairy and stuff. It's fully animatronic, like. Oh, yeah. what yeah, the. Yeah. F- yeah, there's no one in the suit or anything. Oh, like, no, I don't like that at it's all. all. It's all close-ups of, like, Norm's face, and it's not but very well done. I hate that. I actually hate animatronics. Yeah, <laughs> they, they never work. They always look like ass. Yeah, I don't know how, because this is, like, a fairly low-budget film, which went absolutely nowhere. Like, this... Yeah, no. Th- this doesn't even have, like, a... This wasn't even hated. The director doesn't even have an IMDb... Or a, a, a Wikipedia page. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, the film wasn't even... Um, it wasn't even hated. It just has no reviews. Mm. No one saw it. It was just it wasn't. I don't know if it was even released. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, yeah, the norm is like very poorly done, um, and it's it's it, it kind of like straddles or it doesn't even straddle the line. It just isn't like you'd expect this to be like it's a buddy cop comedy kind of thing. You expect like kind of something like uh, you know the way like Ice Cube and Kevin Hart did those films a few years ago. 
uh, buddy oh, cop comedies. Yeah. What was that called? I Ride along. Ride along. Yeah, yeah. And you watched there two of them. Yeah, there was two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's like a few of those films. I, the Rock had one recently with Kevin Hart. They've had about five of those movies. Yeah, like Central Intelligence and something else. Yeah, yeah. And they're all they're all the same movie. Um, yeah. Obviously, but like they uh, they're family movies, so you, you can watch your kid and stuff. Um, uh, like obviously they have some of the jokes for the for the for the grown ups thrown in there, mm. but like they're 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 masked, you know. They're masked. Whereas in like in in a, no- a gnome named Norm, um, you just he's just pure like a uh, sexually harassing women, like human women. As you as man, it's the nineties, and- you know, it's a different time. <laughs> yeah, he's there like he's there like a uh, like commenting on um, you know uh, butts and uh, asses and like uh, you know breasts and stuff like yeah, that. Like, yeah. Why <laughs> why would I go for a gnome woman when I, when I have a a large lady? <laughs> Literally, yeah, it's, it's like every man's dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he's there groping people and stuff. It's like what Jesus the fuck is fucking pervert gnome? Typical cop. <laughs> that's the moral of the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they realize at the end that that Norm is the actually the uh, the bad guy. Mm. But yeah, the whole thing is about um, the chief is the actual killer at the end of the day. <clears throat> and so the chief is the is the the guy who killed the guy in the park, which led to Gallagher being disgraced. And um, so the chief tries to kill um, Norm. And so there's this kind of wild goose chase thing. And all the while you have, um, um, I think Tina is her name, is like the human wo- love interest for uh, for for Detective Gallagher. Mm. Uh, like, she's, like, so, like, overtly sexualized in just these really weird ways. For Like, it doesn't make sense for, for a family film. And, uh, like, she has this weird thing with Norm. Um, she also, like, rides those people in the office, like, out of nowhere. And um, But then she gets with uh, Gallagher at the end. But it's a really weird film. Just kind of a... It's a, a time capsule. It's like a cultural artifact from a time yeah. gone by. I, I appreciate it. From a it. different way of making movies. A, a different <laughs> way of living. A different <laughs> way of life altogether. Yeah, it, it's literally something out of... Um, if you can imagine... Like, um, um, uh, imagine a parody of an 80s film. Like, this is exactly what it mm. is. Like, buddy cop comedy with animatronic buddy cop. Um, and it ends on a um, a freeze frame of the gnome with a thumbs up. Um, and it starts playing, um, you know, the song from the end of uh, Ferris Bueller. Or what was it? Uh, like, oh yeah, yeah, don don <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is that the? Yeah, I know the. It's in Ferris Bueller. I don't know where it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Boom, boom. And then it goes to credits. That sounds awful. <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah. It was a total waste of time. We don't get movies that end in freeze frames anymore. I wish we did. Yeah, yeah. Like there is a place for it, a time and a place. Um, but yeah, not. A gnome named Norm wasn't very good. I I did I just saw it though, and I thought it, it, the poster looked really interesting. Mm. And then it was it was apparent within the first five minutes. It was like a, a totally uh, indefensible film, you know, yeah. from every perspective. <laughs> 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 you know, there was no saving this. But I was, I was already in too deep. Yeah, yeah. Would you start a film like that? It's like fuck. I have to keep going with this. Ah, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was it was no. I was going to say it was enjoyable, but it wasn't. I had a similar. Thing. I watched. Um, I'm not going to talk about, it, but you know, the, you know, Ratchet, Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, yeah. I watched that that movie today. In the first five minutes, they have like, a movie. Didn't yeah, they have a movie, man. It's fucking dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. I was like, I knocked it on, and within like ten minutes, it was like 1.5 speed. And then when I got to the airport, it was like Grant, double speed. <laughs> 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 Let's get this thing over with. Uh, when, when was that released? In 2016. That's like Ratchet and Clank the movie. Oh man, it's real bad. It's, on Amazon. Amazon. it's on Amazon Prime. What yeah, yeah, it's real. Even like the animation's bad, and like the jokes are abysmal. Oh my god, it's one of the least funny films I've ever seen. <laughs> there's like one, there's one good joke where like a guy just like opens up a, a an airlock and all the the dudes get sucked out into space like really abruptly. It's just out of nowhere, and it's like <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> this, you know, the Wilhelm's. Scream. Yeah, yeah. A character does that and then another character goes, Wilhelm! I was like, uh, God damn it. Anyone who uses that after the year 1980 should be hanged for crimes against Yeah. Him, you know? uh, if you call it out specifically in your film, you should, you should like, I don't know, be deported or something. You should be deported. <laughs> <laughs> Sony, you fuck. It's so fucked up. Yeah. Ah, uh, fucking hell. But yeah, would you watch anything else? I watched uh, another, another wee movie. I watched uh, Spencer. Twenty twenty one Spencer. Oh, with um, uh, Kristen Stewart. Yeah, a friend of the podcast, of course. Great friend of the podcast. Yep. Um, Going back to our Twilight series. Some other people are, are in this film. There's a few heads that you'd recognize in this film. Mm. None of which I can remember the name of. Uh, what's your one's name? That's in Shape of Water. 
No idea. Oh, I didn't see that Sarah. No, that's her name. Oh. Sarah Underwood. <clears throat> oh, God, that's going to annoy me. Anyway, I'm going to... I'll look it up. Yeah, you look it up there. Um, But um, she's in it as well. Um, And there's a few other people. But, um, yeah, this is the story of uh, Princess Diana. And, uh, Sally Hawkins. Sally Hawkins. I knew we became one uh, Sally Hawkins. She's in it. She plays... um. Uh, Diana's maid, essentially. On the geologist from Prometheus. Is she is she in Prometheus? No, the geologist from Prometheus. You know the guy's like, oh, we can take off our helmets. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who's in he it. in this film? I don't know. He's in the film. Oh yeah, he's the chef. Yeah, yeah he's good as well. Um, your man that plays um, he's in Harry Potter. He plays a rat in Harry Potter. Oh, Timothy Spall. He's in this. Mm. He's so good. Oh my god, he's, he's a fanta- actor, he's a yeah. great actor. And Kristen Stewart's also amazing in this film. She was nominated for this film. But this is um basically this is set um on like a Christmas. How is this guy Charles? Yeah, I know. It's like or to be fair, actually, when you're watching it, um, did they make him uglier in the film? You know Charles is not a handsome man. No, look up Charles back then. Look up. Oh no, wait. No, sorry, I'm thinking of William. William used to be hot, didn't he? Yeah. And he lost his hair and he got like... Charles was always ugly. Yeah. Let me, let me see a photo of Charles and Diana. Mm. But anyway, this film is set over a Christmas weekend, basically. It's like Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and then, I guess, Boxing Day is the call it in the film. And um, it's just like Diana not wanting to be a royal and like very... Like she's already at the conclusion more or less that like fuck, I, I need to get out of this life. But it's like six years, I think it's like six or seven years before she dies. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, he, he doesn't have the teeth. He has the hair and all, but he doesn't have the teeth. Mm. Um, how the fuck did he bag Prince Diana? I guess you're a royal. I guess. <laughs> he's a billionaire, man. Yeah. I mean, he's even more than a billionaire. He owns oh, yeah. a country. <laughs> he owns a country. Like uh, and one of the richest countries on earth, and that's his uh, Scum. Um, But it's basically... This is basically a horror film, uh, like a psychological horror film, um, in the same sense of like um, Shiva Baby. Did you ever watch Shiva Baby? No, no, it is on my movie list. Though, yeah, it's, you said I should watch it. Yeah, that does like family horror very good. Like just being like forced to live a certain way, and that's essentially what like Princess Diana had to do. It's like she was not cut out to be a royal, um, or like she did not realize what it meant to be a royal like what type of lifestyle you have to have there's a bit where like she's talking with charles and charles is like you need to have two different people you need to be two different people to be a royal you need to be yourself and then you also need to be the version that everyone sees Mm. the one that the public actually wants you to be and like that's not, like, you can't be yourself, essentially. You can't do whatever you want. There's, like, a bit where, like, um, she walks into her room and she, her, uh, she has, like, a clothesline, like, set up in her room. And on each one is written what she has to wear, like, Christmas Day dinner, Christmas Day lunch, Christmas Day breakfast, mm. Boxing Day church wear, <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, and you have to wear that. Yeah. Um, and there's all these traditions and, like, expectations that you have to live up to. And, like, you're like, <clears throat> and, like um, and she's, like, you know, bulimic and she's, like, depressed. And she's going a bit fucking crazy. And she's seeing, like, ghosts of uh, Henry VIII's wives, the ones that got beheaded. I can't. Anne Boleyn, no. It's her. Yeah, that one. Mm. Um, do you remember? Do you remember how to remember? Not not, not their names, but like the order. Nope. Divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. Was it six? Just six. He killed six. He six. Well, yeah. he oh, killed yeah, two. He had six wives. He had six wives. He killed two. He only he killed two. I thought he killed more than that. I thought he killed more, but he killed six two. wives. Yeah. Divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. That's the origin story of Protestantism. Yeah. <laughs> Mad, isn't it? Mad, <laughs> like, Protestantism just basically, like... Well, except for Luther and all. Like, you know, uh, the Church of England basically just founded on a, on one dude wanting to one not... One big, fat, horny bastard. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, literally, yeah, yeah. Where the Church of England came from. Yeah. Um, but, um, so she's seeing, like, Anne, what's it, Bolin? Anne Boleyn, yeah. Bob, Anne Boleyn. And, like, Anne Boleyn's like, you need to get out of here. And, like, the whole film is, like, obviously tainted with this, like, tension over the fact that... She's dead. She's dead. Mm-hmm. And also, like, 
Like the Royals killed her. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't. I don't think that's even. Uh, I don't think it's even vaguely disputed. It's like it's like the JFK thing. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Obviously, JFK wasn't killed by the CIA, and obviously, um, Diana wasn't killed by the Royals. But, but in the real world, yes, they obviously were. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I like. You know? I like this film. It's like, like the, the film is aware of that as well. It's like mm. it's like like the Queen is just staring at Diana, and some scenes have been like, who plays the Queen? Just my own. She looks like her though. All oh, right. Um, she plays herself. She plays herself. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like like the prince or the prince. The queen is just there. They're staring at Diana like, uh, you, you bitch. F- you fucking get in line. You better not mess this this up for everyone. Yeah. You better not make us. If you make us look bad, you make the country look bad and stuff like that. Yeah. And like all the while, she had fucking Andrew under the wing. Yeah, you know? yeah, literally, a literal pedophile yeah. hanging out in the gaff. You know, yeah. absolute madness. Um, and it's just like. The the way that the film is like portraying like the pressures of being a royal, and there's this one scene that like it's um I don't I honestly I don't know the family tree of the royals at all. I it was only in this fucking film where I realized that Harry and William are brothers and that they're both Diana's kids. Oh, you didn't know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought that because uh, obviously I was like, oh yeah, Harry's Diana's kid because. Everyone always talks about that. Mm. No one seems to reference the fact that William is also her kid. <laughs> yeah. No one talks about that. <laughs> I suppose. Because Harry seems like more of a tortured soul. Because he's basically like Diana. Like He's like the the, yeah. the wild card. The... He should come out and just say it. Like, yeah, he's the black sheep. He basically. needs to come out, you know. He more or less He's, he's already his... cut his, his bridges. Like, or he, burns he, his bridges. he more or less said it about Megan. He's like, I've seen this happen to one of my family members. It's not going to happen again. But just say it properly. Yeah. Don't, don't <laughs> hint at it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Make accusations. Yeah. Do it. Call it your brother, your or your uncle. Is it Andrew? Yeah, uncle. Yeah, is uncle Andrew? Call yeah, it. Do Andrew it. and yeah, the, your granny and all. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's a scene where like um, uh, William. There's like a bit where like uh, Dan is staying up with the kids on uh, Christmas Eve to like you know play games or whatever, which is like a big no. Like they're not, they're not. They have to be in bed so they can get up and stuff like that. Like you have to stick to this regiment, um, and like the staff. And everyone in, in the house is always watching and is always listening. Mm. And, you know, so there's like a, there's this thing in the film where like anything that you say, someone will hear in this house and it will get back to the royals and stuff like that. Like you can't do anything in this house without mm. someone knowing. Um, so the uh, so she's staying up with the kids or whatever. And um, it's, just, it's it's a it's such a good scene where. They're like they're just like playing the game, or whatever. And they're talking, and uh, William, he's like meant to be like twelve or thirteen, I guess, in this film. He's basically saying like, uh, or like Harry says, I can't remember exactly what said, but basically William says, "I am going to be king, and I don't have a choice about it. Like I don't have a say in this. My life is set up in front of me. Mm. I think what they say in the film is like there's the past." And the future, there is no present because yeah, it's it already determined. It's already determined. Yeah. Like no matter what you do, it's already determined for you. Like you are going down this path, mm. and it's like I never really, really thought about that. Like that's fucked. Like <laughs> I'm like it's I know it's like, fault. I know it's like fuck them. I know it's like oh boo hoo. Like you're yeah. you're oh, no, be, you're be king. king. Yeah. But like I think in um, <clears throat> especially in this kind of era of the royal family the newer ones coming in are not the same uh, tradition of you know it's a queen elizabeth's like era like mm. these ones that are coming up like not like charles but like william and is george his son yes yeah, like very young son he's very young son they're gonna be they're gonna be different because they're not going to be kings. Yeah, they, it's not going to last that long. Not, they're not going to get to be king. Like <laughs> it might not last that long. You will yeah. not, you know. But yeah, what, what do you mean, like? But like, just the fact that, like, the I think that, like, back in the day, uh, you know, it, like even like like Charles and stuff like that, they they wouldn't have really given a shit. It's the term. It's the time of like the paparazzi and mm. like the public being able to engage with you a lot more. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, like yeah. that's that's different to being a royal back in you know in the forties or whatever when Elizabeth was was queen. Mm. Um, it's a different era, and you got different, much different 
pressures on you mm-hmm. and like they'll fucking take you out if you don't <laughs> they'll they'll take you out if you don't abide by it like <laughs> that's it you got mi5 reading yeah. on your back like reading on your neck hopefully that'll just make them come to their senses and mm. forget about the whole thing yeah he doesn't have to be king he can just say fuck it this is the end yeah just, this, it's it stops here which of the it kings, doesn't have to be you which know? of the kings is like i'm not being king because i want to go off with my american wife yeah uh was it edward yeah edward ab- abdicated mm. and um yeah he abdicated at some point I yeah. think, and De Valera used it as, as an excuse to declare like a republic or something. I think I remember. I that. think yeah, yeah, it was it's that the constitution. Yeah. I think it's the king's speeches. It's all about the, the that, king's that, speeches, and it's in that. Yeah, yeah, and that was De, like that was De Valera's breaking point. He's like, mm. I'll I'll abide by whatever you do, but if you fucking get divorced, forget about yeah. it. You know? We're declaring <laughs> it's a republic now. You know, like, slide that in. <laughs> scum. Oh, they're all scum. But yes, but it's 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 a a psychological horror taking that kind yeah. of sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, you know? and, um, rather than like the standard fucking biopic, which is just yeah, boring. It is you know? like because I was thinking like, oh, I don't really want a standard bio. It's not at all. Yeah, how I did you end up watching it? I was, watching, I was sitting Friday night with my mom. I was, just, I was sitting in. My mom was like, "Okay, oh, want Spencer?" I was like, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> yeah. Um, my dad came in and he's like this didn't happen, this didn't happen. I was like, uh, he because he hadn't seen the film. I was like, Dad, she was literally talking to ghosts at some stage in this film. Like, this is fiction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Anne Boleyn wasn't resurrected. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, none of this happened. Like, yeah. there's, a, there's a bit where like she eats pearls and stuff like that. And she like pukes them up and stuff like that. Mm. It's, um, no, nah, it's good. It's good. Um, God, it does not depict the royals in a good light though. It's like, that's what you want. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird how, um, like you had that that show, The Royals, The Crown. Yeah, yeah, The Crown, and then I think The Royals is a show as well, though. Mm, yeah, but that The Crown is quite critical, wasn't it? Of uh, of them. I'm not sure. I've never seen The Crown. I've like, heard it kind of was like it kind of went into. I know the last season they had, they kind of went. It was set during the Troubles, but obviously they they didn't really talk about the Troubles because yeah. the Troubles don't exist in Britain. You know. Yeah. They don't even have it in their imagination. Oh but God, like, no. They, I think they. <laughs> Orla was, she said she said it briefly touched on um, Mountbatten being a pedophile and stuff like that, which Mad. is never talked about in, yeah. in Britain at all. Um, and then you have this as well, which seems like kind of a... Like, even the fact that they're approaching the subject, even though it is like a huge... Like, Princess Diana was a I cultural icon. Yeah. Yeah. Even, like, in Ireland, like, she's mm. huge. Like, she's huge, huge yeah. Yeah, yeah. People loved Princess Diana. Yeah. But, um, you know, the fact that it was able to be made, um, it just seems a bit weird. I think that, like... There is no way that you could do a story of Diana where the royals are in a good light over it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, like, the fact that no, they're allowed yeah. to make it, you know? There's no there's no way. And I think as well, like, possibly, like, okay, like, like you know, in the scenario where Princess Diana, like, you know, was an accident, mm. I would imagine that in, in that scenario, in that alternate timeline that we passed out, maybe uh, we live in, who knows, but you know. <laughs> in in that timeline which we are currently living in. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, They would feel remorse over the fact that like, it's like, yeah, we kind of fucked up there because, you know, she yeah, did. Sorry about, she's sorry, she's about sorry about that. Sorry about that. Yeah, they're, they're very cold about it. It's mm. so funny. So like blatant. <laughs> so blatant. Oh, well. Uh, she shouldn't have got involved says me yeah no no but, um, but like yeah it's it's good it's very good um and it has like it has a very bittersweet ending because like it ends on a, on a nice note but of course like mm. like, <laughs> yeah, like we know spoilers <laughs> but like princess anna ended up dying years later yeah um and like it all plays into it like the film is aware of its of the ending that it's not going to show you mm. so you like don't that. need to see the ending. yeah you yeah. don't need to see that Takes place over three days. I like films that take over place over like a certain like a short amount of time. Mm. So it's very interesting, very constrained. Yeah, rather than trying to cover too much ground, which is like the problem with biopics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like there's no point. Yeah, unless you have just an interesting like, way of telling it. Yeah, just capture like a small moment in time and have that to like use that small moment in time to like tell the life story. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can infer a lot from doing that. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. You spend three days with someone. If you spend three hours with someone, you're gonna get get to know them fairly well, you know. Yeah. Especially if you're telling a story that's actually structured. You know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, we go for a break. <coughs> yes, let's do it. And now on to our recommended film. I was gonna say recommended episode. Recommended film. Every of episode is a recommended episode. Yeah, you don't skip an episode here. You can't. It's chronological. It's linear. The Last Temptation of 
Christ. Christ. Directed by Martin Scorsese in 1988. A quick synopsis. Jesus, a humble Judean carpenter beginning to see that he is the son of God, is drawn to revolutionary action against the Roman occupiers by Judas. Despite his protestations that love, not violence, is the path to salvation, the burden of being the saviour of mankind torments Jesus through his, throughout his life, leading him to doubt. As he is put to death on the cross, Jesus is tempted by visions of an ordinary life married to Mary Magdalene. Hmm. This is the last temptation of Christ. Just a quick one before I forget. <laughs> Did I ever tell you the story about how, uh, you know, um, uh, Robin Hood and Mary... Now, what's her name? In, what's uh, Robin Hood's bird? What's her name? I have no idea what you're talking about. Robin Hood has a girlfriend or like a wife or something. What the oh, fuck? Oh yeah, the the girl fox Ma- Maid Marian. Maid Marian. Mm. When I was <laughs> so when I was doing my elf gig one time, I had to be Robin Hood, mm. and uh, I had to be like Mary, whatever. What, what's her name? Maid Marian. Maid Marian. I got to go Maid Marian, and one time I said. Mary Magdalene. I was like, oh, fuck, that's the wrong one. <laughs> None of the kids what? noticed. But some of the parents like, that's the wrong one. <laughs> that's not the character. That's the wrong legend. <laughs> yeah, they're playing Jesus in tights. And, and, <laughs> and, and like, the, the girl that was in her, she just saw like the look of like horror in my eyes as I walked towards her as I realized what I had just said. I'm like, oh, I fucked up my line. Anyway, line. Whoops. Line, please. <laughs> Kid, what's my line? Um... Yeah, Last Temptation of Christ. What do you think? It's mental. <laughs> mental, isn't it? Mental film. Very strange interpretation of uh, the story. You know? Very different. But, uh, you know, this was a hugely controversial film, goes out saying. Banned in this country. Mm-hmm. Absolutely banned to bits. Uh, I'm not sure for how long, but um, it was not liked. It was not looked on kindly. It's still banned in several countries. Singapore and uh, some other country. In- Singapore are mad for banning shit. That's because they're fucking Brit bastards. You know, they're just uh, they're the Anglo's of the East Asian world. I don't know if that's even true, <laughs> but, like, but go I'm going to go with it. But stem in some other country in East Asia, um, still ban it. You're not allowed to distribute it, distribute it over there for some reason. And loads of other countries obviously were very, very against it. Actually, there was a bombing. You know, when you think about bombings and like religious bombings and stuff, this is and this is the same week Salman Rushdie was stabbed, nearly stabbed to death on on stage. That whole thing. You know, you usually think of like you know crazy islamists and stuff like that mm. or like iran and like fatwas and stuff like that but this 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 film was the subject of uh christian terrorist bombings in america Mad. um in a, a cinema was was blown up by uh catholic integralist extremists who is the fucking irish in the- <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a lot of patties in america went mental uh, blew up a cinema i think one person died and like 13 people were injured um it wasn't the film wasn't even showing. It was after the film had showed, and they started a new showing, and all the people at that showing got blown up. They're probably watching fucking Looney Tunes or something <laughs> yeah, like you know, something yeah, <laughs> fucking taxi driver some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, this is also Paul Schrader as well. Yeah, I did not know Paul Schrader wrote this. I did when he, when his name came up, I was like, oh, uh, okay, that makes sense. I now. was like, get in <laughs> yeah. there. But um, like, it's also a Scorsese it's, Schrader joint. Nice. Like you're not, you can't get any better than that. But um, it's like it's. A lot of the same thing. It's. I feel like it's more of a Schrader film than, yeah. than like a Scorsese yeah, thing. I, would, I, I wouldn't agree. I wouldn't see a lot of Scorsese. Um, as much as I, isms. <laughs> yeah, as much as I, I, I'd, I'd see a lot more uh, Paul Schrader in it. Like, because obviously you think about like, um, like Taxi Driver and then, um, um, uh, Mishima mm-hmm. and even um, like First Reformed. Like he's all, like constantly dealing with this kind of like Calvinist, like kind of individualist suffering, suffering, yeah. suffering. Uh, and then you have like this is like the ultimate iteration of that where it's like literally it's the first sufferer. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ, all about him bearing the suffering of, of all mankind and all that stuff. Um so this was a f I'd say this was a fucking parody for Paul. Mm. But he apparently because it was originally supposed to be a follow up to Scorsese's King of Comedy, but um it was too controversial, basically. Because mm. the the script had already been written, Trader's script is already written. Scorsese wanted to go ahead with it after King of Comedy. And uh, they pulled the plug. The studio pulled the plug. Uh, it was only a few years later that uh, whichever studio did this, I can't remember which one it is, uh, they agreed to let uh, Scorsese make it. 
um, on the condition that he made something a bit more commercial afterwards. I'm not sure what film that was, but... Probably fucking Cape Fear or something like that. Oh, yeah, literally yeah. It, was, it was Cape Fear. Because I was thinking Cape Fear is probably in the 90s, so... Yeah, it's like the least Scorsese film of all time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's or the most studio Scorsese you've y- ever seen. Yeah, yeah. That and, like, Shutter Island are probably the only ones I can think yeah, of. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, um... But, like, Schrader wasn't really involved with the actual production of this film. Mm. Like, the script was already there. And uh, as they were filming it, there was a lot of uh, improv. A lot of kind of yeah. making it up as they went along. Which you can kind of see in the film. Yeah. A lot of the dialogue is really dodgy. Yeah. Like, some of it is just, like... It's not, like... It's not perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, it's... They're, there's just parts where you can see they're just kind of stitching scenes together. Yeah. Or stitching kind of, like, lines together. Um, and they're not re- they don't really care about what you know that specific line that connector is is kind of uh, how that's coming across or whatever um but in general it, it's it all still works very well it's very mm-hmm. much like it's still a holistic piece that still makes sense in what it's trying to do you know the whole um reinterpretation of of Jesus's life from yeah. a, from a like a, an alternate perspective yeah it starts with that title card as well this is not based on the gospels this is based Which on a fictional I didn't know until, until yeah. it was in the film I thought yeah. like this I thought this was like you know loosely based off the gospels or something like that obviously not you know it still kind of is yeah, yeah but like it's based off a novel um which is like you know fiction it's a like one guy in think interpreting what if Jesus was like that in this film is an adaptation of that which mm. um Come, it makes sense. It comes across in the film as well that this is like, like you know, loosely based off like this. Well, the first two hours especially is like you know, Jesus, you know, doing Jesus things. It's the story of Jesus. Mm. Well, I was mad confused at the start. I was like, where in the timeline of Jesus is this? Shame, yeah. Because I thought that this film was like, he's already. Jesus, mm. but he's not at the start of the film, and it's that like conf- Iron Man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were at Iron Man two already, but I was yeah. watching Iron Man one, <laughs> yeah. um, and I was like, I was like, what's what's going on? He's building crosses for the Romans, stuff like that. What's 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 this? What is this? Yeah, I had no idea what was going on. And Judas comes in, and I was like, oh, so he's an apostle, but like the apostles hadn't even informed at that stage. I was mad confused for like the first like twenty five minutes of this film, mm. trying to f- pick up where in Jesus's life has this film started. Mm. Um, could have helped if there was like a, and th- I know this is mad cheesy, but like it would have been nice to have like m- like twenty Backstory. like my like twenty four BC just show up in the title like at the very start <laughs> of the film just to say like this is when this is around when we're taking place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a bit of yeah, a bit of context, you know. Yeah, a bit of you know, you just drop us in this place we've never been, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because he's building crosses, and I, I thought he was building his own cross. And I was like, I don't remember that from the Bible. Same, that's what I was thinking as well. Yeah. Um, and Judas rocked up and was like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I was like, what's... Is this Judas? Yeah. And then, but like, see, I don't know, I don't even know a lot of my own history about that stuff. Judas, I thought Judas was just a pure villain. No, Judas is like his... I think like, It was his best mate. Yeah, Judas was basically, I think Peter was his was his right hand man as an apostle. Mm. But I think in terms of like being mates, Judas was his best mate. Cause like my there's four factions in The Apostles. No, there's four factions at the time at oh, in the Jerusalem's Ze- The Zealots, the Pharisees. The Sagittarius or something like that. The Ascends and the uh, Nazarenes. No, not the Nazarenes. It's something like that. It's something like that. Yeah. yeah. But it is, yeah, the zealots, the Pharisees Pharisees were the, you know... Yeah, the Pharisees and the... I say Sagittarius, that's not what they're called. The Sands or something, isn't it? Yeah, whatever whatever they're called. They were the dudes that led, that ruled the temple, basically. They were like the rich, rich. Mm -hmm. And the zealots were basically the terrorists. Yeah, the good guys. The Nazar, whatever the fuck, don't know what they're doing. I don't think they ever really come up in the story of Jesus, and they were just floating about doing shit. Yeah. Um, So, like... Judas was a zealot. Um, he was he was a freedom fighter basically, um, and uh, he's just like, "What are you doing, Jesus? What are you building? Cro- you're a traitor. Mm. Yeah, uh, cause collaborator. You're, yeah, mm. you're like, you know, you're not. You're the same as as the Romans. You're you're building the tools that they will use to murder your people. Essentially, is what he's saying. It's like, what are you doing? You traitor. <laughs> yeah. And the people of Jerusalem react that way as well. They're like. Or no, he's in Nazareth at that time. There are fucking rocks at him and stuff like that. He's like carrying the cross so that someone can get, you know, crucified. Mm. Um, how often, not how often, but like up until what time 
or do people still get crucified? Yeah, on the odd occasion. Mm. As a but it's not like it. Um, oh no! Well, in Saudi Arabia and stuff, it is a, an execution method. Fucking hell! Still, do you know I, I think that's just for Christians though. Um, do you know, in all those mental countries, it still is. You know. Do you know how? Uh, like, do you know what actually kills you when you're crucified? Yeah, exposure. It's exposure. You, you, but you survive. You can't. You can't breathe properly. That's what kills you. Oh yeah, you yeah, yeah. Hung up like that because you have to like you have to keep yourself up, and eventually you're not able to, and basically you just can't. Mm. You basically suffocate. From what I understand. They've handy little seats in this film. Did you notice that? Handy little seats. They've seats. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, that looks easy. <laughs> I think they're meant to have, like, um, something at your feet so that you have to put... You can start, You yeah. say, you have to, like, hoosh yourself up uh, by your feet, but your feet obviously have a nail going through them, so mm. that's fucking painful, and like, move, you're moving your hands slightly also hurts, uh, but you have to, like, try and keep yourself up, which is excruciatingly painful, yeah. and then if you slump back down, you're not able to properly breathe. Yeah, up. something like that kills you. Not a uh, not pleasant anyway. Not a vibe. Yeah, not a way I want to die. Kind of bad out that they just made it like, you know, like if Jesus came back, he'd be like, "What the fuck? <laughs> why are you still doing this? <laughs> yeah, why is the crosses everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> just as PTSD." Mm. Uh, but um, yeah, like uh, G, like because this is very much the story of like Jesus the man as opposed to Jesus Yeah, this is Jesus Christ. the dude, yeah. Yeah. This is like the guy behind the myth. <laughs> this is basically I swear to God, I actually took this note down and as I was writing I was like, I'm I can't believe what I've written this. Is this blasphemous? No, no, not even. It was um where is my this note? Jesus as a man is essentially one whose revolution needed for him to die. He had to be martyred for the cause to outlive him. He needed to be more than a man. And then I realized, I'm just basically describing how people talk about Batman in the Dark Knight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But that, that, that's, that is the legend. That's, yeah. that's the thing. It's like, they needed a symbol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That That is literally... Yeah, that's what I took from the film as well. But you have the same thing. Like, that's all like revolutionaries, like mm. Guevara and stuff. Yeah. Robespierre had the exact same point. Yeah, he he literally his idea was to embrace death. He planned to die. You have to because die because he wanted to, so you can be a symbol. Yeah, to like transcend the uh, what currently exists. There has to be some kind of like, like or like a revolutionary change is always going to have like you know huge casualties. You have to accept if you want to be a revolutionary, you have to accept that you're going to be that you have to you or people you know will die. Oh yeah, you have to embrace the fact that you will die. Even if you don't die, you have to think I am going to die. Mm-hmm. Um. And that's what definitely what I took from the film, um, yeah. Which is plays into the whole political context of it, which is something that never comes up in any kind of uh, any Christian films, really. Yeah, I yeah, uh, it's um, a, like Jesus Christ Superstar touches uh, touches on it a good bit, but uh, this way more so. This is like, like up until Jesus starts performing miracles, this is like very there's like nothing supernatural going on, mm. and even when he is like. He's not like well, except for the Lazarus scene, but like where he let you raise the dude from the dead, <laughs> yeah. supernatural. But like, um, <laughs> it's pretty far out. It's yeah. pretty far out. But like most of it's like psychedelic kind of and like psychological stuff going on. Yeah, there's it's it's full of doubt, mm. full of uh, uncertainty. Like it's Jesus the guy, and like if you're the guy and you're like, am I the Messiah? Your first thought is going to be, have I gone completely insane? Yeah, and that's like that's how the fuck could I be? That's the. Uh, the top pattern that you you see in the film that he's kind of like struggling over, and um, because people call him crazy, and obviously he sounds crazy, completely insane. And mm. uh, but then they have all the different, um, it like it does kind of turn into, um, it's almost like a horror film. It's like psycho psychedelic. There are elements of horror in the film, which mm. I re- I really really liked, like the when he's in the desert. Yeah, that that is just scene is so good. Yeah, and he's like being tested by Satan and stuff like that. That's like those are the cool parts of the Bible, where it's like it's just really intense. Stories, obviously, stories that obviously aren't like totally literal, but um, represent um, some kind of like philosophical struggle, um, which proves the point, which Jesus, you know, would have you been trying to make anyway? Mm. You know, this is this is the kind of philosophy behind what he was what he was preaching and stuff like that, um, even if it isn't all necessarily completely one hundred percent true, um, or didn't you know fully happen in reality? Yeah. As a theolo- as a, this is going to sound mad pretentious, but as like a theological text, 
this film is so interesting because like aspects of Jesus that like I never would have really considered before because like Jesus is God as a man. That is like who Jesus is. Mm. So therefore he has free will and he has um the struggles and the temptations and the passions that that you know man has. The so, vices like, he wants to bone and he's like he really like he like I want to like when um when he's being tempted by Satan uh you know in the desert Satan comes to him as a snake and is like here just you know come back and you can you can have all the like sexual desire that you could ever want mm. like I can make that happen for you and he's like no get out of here no fuck off she devil <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. and then he comes back and he's a lion is like you could have the power to conquer like the world like you can make whatever you want any country you want any yeah. country you want you can claim it so like the desire of power is like no i don't want that uh and then the third one is just basically like we can make you supernatural superman basically is what the yeah. devil's like he's like no i don't want that like these are like temptations that man would fall to like you know, you could bang whoever you want. Mm. You could rule your own country. We can make you like eternal. You can have superpowers essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she's like, no, no, no. And like that really humanizes Jesus in a really powerful way that I haven't thought about ever. Yeah, I never really got that from uh, the parables. Mm. I don't know why, because like it is, it's the exact same story that cause he just I, wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I think it's just like because it's it's so common, or it's kind of like just it's already embedded. It's hard to visualize something when the, when a priest is telling you that, though. I yeah, think, yeah. Like, I think it's cooler when you like. I think the way the film sets it out is cooler, mm. but you also need the kind of um, I don't know how you call it. It's like the the fire and brimstone kind of aspect of it, like yeah. where you're like, this is, um. Or you're not just seeing the story play out. It's like also like what the whole film is about. It's like also like what could have happened, or like what the alternate option is. Yeah, like Jesus like gives into that timeline. Yeah, yeah, like he gives into that, and then like what happens after that. Like uh, like the whole film is about the um, like the temptation, where you kind of like you're looking at Jesus's last moments, and he's thinking about how things could have been different he could have mm. had a, like a nice easy domestic life with Mary Magdalene he could have just lived a normal life yeah but you see what happened you you see kind of what happens in that universe mm. and things have gone to shit and the whole like the, like the lessons that there's um, he has to see it through that there's some kind of mission there's something um, some higher purpose being served yeah and then um, then it like it, it like he, it like flows into like real life because you're thinking like this is like a real thing to happen this is a real guy who actually existed yeah and like like that point when he died um, when he was crucified, like since then, like the entire, like all world history's like completely changed. Like, yeah, just, all because, um, he just he just stayed up there, you know, basically. Yeah, like the, and he was like, I'm just gonna take it because like, that was the idea. I was when that so like so at the end of the film, like the two hours beforehand is just basically like the story of Jesus and like really going into like the politics and like how Jesus was a revolutionary and what that meant for like because Judas is like. This dude is taking down the Romans. Yeah. Like, he's going to set up, like, you know... Israel. Israel will rise from this, and we will have our own country, and we can, like, govern and, you know, have power. And uh, Jesus is like, no, it's not true violence. It's true love. Like, you need to love one another. And that is how, you know, you can become... You may not have anything, but when you have love, you have everything, essentially. Mm. Um, and there's, a, like, there's one little exchange between Judas and Jesus... Where Jesus is like, um, he's basically explaining, he's like, uh, I see a woman and I blush, but yet I have complete lust in my body. I see a man strike a woman and I preach love, but at the same time, I want to murder him. Like, he's like filled with all these contradictions and flaws mm. because that's like, you know, what humans are. Yeah. Um, and then at the end, when he's being crucified, he, I was so confused by this because i thought that what we were seeing wasn't until like the twist is like the little girl was actually the devil and that the devil had yeah, actually yeah. like tricked him to to get down from the cross and that it wasn't actually because jesus is like why have you forsaken me god why have you forsaken me and then an angel appears and is like 
here, I'll take you down from the cross and you can just live a normal life. Yeah, you've suffered enough. You've God, s- yeah. you've fulfilled your mission, yeah. Yeah, you've you've God is you've proven your love to God. So Jesus goes off and he he goes off and he has sex with Mary Magdalene and then he goes and she dies and then he goes off and he has a family with Mary, something else, and whoever. Mm. whoever yeah, he has kids anyway. He's, yeah, loads of he kids. He lives a nice domestic life without um, any trouble. And then but when he has that scene with the guy, who, the preacher, who's like preaching the word of Jesus, and Jesus is like, who are you talking about? I'm Jesus. I didn't die. I got down from the cross. Um, and the guy's like, but I'm talking about Jesus, the, the resurrected. That's the Jesus that matters. That's the Jesus that's like the yeah. one that can change the world. But she's like, that's a, that's a lie. That's all a myth. I was so confused mm. because I thought that what we were seeing, I was like, okay, now I understand why this is seen as blasphemy because the whole point of Jesus is that like body and soul, he was brought up to heaven. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that this film was then saying like, no, no, the body stayed around and like Jesus lived his life and that his soul went up to heaven, and that's the one that we that we believe in. Mm. I was so confused. <laughs> yeah, that's actually what Muslims believe that uh, Jesus didn't die; he was just he was just brought up into heaven at one stage. Well, it's actually uh, obviously the film isn't the same, but like mm. they didn't uh, they don't believe that he died on the cross. Yeah, they believe he just ascended up. He's just a prophet. Yeah, and there's a there's a difference. There's a sect of Islam which believes that he actually survived the crucifixion and moved to India and then died naturally at like eighty. Mad for no reason i don't know That's why they mad. believe that but anyway yeah yeah it's 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 um it was really confusing at that point I, I had no idea what was going on who else are the other prophets of Maha- of Maha- of islam because obviously prophet abraham Maha- abraham jesus jesus is also a prophet moses moses and a few others muhammad's the last one anyway <laughs> he's the most recent one. obviously muhammad is <laughs> the most important <laughs> one <laughs> yeah, yeah um i know there's a new one coming up you know any day now. Any day now. Same as the Messiah. Yeah. The Mahdi. Al Mahdi. But, but um, um, yeah. Jigs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I think that the those because I was like, yeah, this is a pretty decent film. That last forty minutes, I changed the film into something else for me because mm. I was like, like that's something that n- is never even touched on i feel like when you're learning about religion like at least you know when you learn about catholicism and christianity or whatever mm. like what if jesus got down from the cross what would happen then what if he just gave in yeah it's yes yeah, never really focused on um like it's all about oh you should feel bad for him basically because mm. he took the guilt for you and uh, he's the savior obviously all that stuff he but seems like, very wi- anytime they talk about it he seems like incredibly willing to do everything that he did like he in was the film no no in like when we're like in like when you're learning about jesus oh, in yeah, schools, yeah. Uh-huh. it seems like he was like completely perfect he was completely going along with everything he never had any doubt in his mind mm. that god was like this is what is meant for him and this film is like he absolutely fucking wouldn't have been <laughs> oh no yeah he was just a guy he was pretty shit scared like the last temptation of christ is the temptation to live mm yeah, like that's yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. that's is to is to condemn God and get down from the cross and not have to die. Yeah, to concede defeat to the flesh, basically. Mm. It's like your your most basic instinct <clears throat> is to live, and that's his greatest sacrifice that he chose to die rather than than, than to to stay on. But like like w- when it was being taught, it was always like it's like uh, he died for your sins. You should feel bad for that. This guy died for you. You know, worship mm. God stuff. What's like from what, what I thought from the film is that like it's more of a like at every stage, it's kind of bringing you through the motions of like explaining how he basically took the hard route mm-hmm. at every at every like he sacrificed himself not just for like not just you know for you know the grace of God. Well, obviously, yeah. he was for the grace of God, yeah, literally. Yeah. But um, it's basically about like how you have to change things or to like create God, like the God's world is mm-hmm. what he's always talking about in the film. Uh, you know, uh, heaven on earth and stuff like that. Like you have to make, you have like responsibilities, you have duties, you have things that you have to do, even if you don't want to do them, things that are going to be really painful and awful, yeah. but like, that's part of it, you know, that's like, that's how the world works, it, that's the natural the world, end, like. yeah, yeah, you have the salvation, there's, there's something at the end of the tunnel, uh, I think it's a way cooler interpretation of it, I think it's a very Protestant interpretation, which is probably why we didn't hear, hear a lot about it, mm. um, especially like, I know Calvinism, Calvinism is a more personal kind of 
because uh, Schrader is a Calvinist. Yeah. Um, it's more personal kind of uh, Christianity. Um, because even when you have those scenes in the, because there's a kind of huge emphasis on that scene in the temple. Yeah. Which is you With know the blood streaming down his hand and stuff like that. Or the one where he's like thrown over the uh, the market stalls. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, there's another one as well where he's talking about how. And uh, people are saying this is not the way. Like the, you have to respect the old order, mm. the old order and it's stuff. Like, I am the new law. Yeah, it's like I am the law now. Yeah. It's just like it's like this, it's like, like RoboCop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's not the Jesus you read about, because like that is something. That's another thing where it's like you, the easy route is just go along with what already exists. The hard thing is to say no. Like this is, this, this is, is wrong. wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like this is how you do it. Yeah. Um, and that's that's the that's the interpretation that the film makes of that. Of that kind of parable, which is like that's the that's the political revolutionary yeah, side yeah. of Jesus, uh-huh. especially when you know, like you look at it, it's like, and I know it's like so, like everyone says this, but like Jesus was a huge socialist. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 <laughs> like yeah. if you like, like there's no interpreting like what he did and what he said like at that time and not viewed as like dude was a socialist. <laughs> he was proto socialist. Dude was fighting the bougie bourgeoisie of the, the Roman Empire, of the Roman Empire and the Pharisees mm. who were you know uh, as he's, he's like you have so much money and you have like this will be taken away from you yeah, yeah. he's literally like you have so much food so much wealth it will rust it will rust and the e- moths will it, eat away your cloths and your linens burn everything your world will burn down yeah I love those scenes yeah. where he's just going on like full on polemics against yeah and um, the rich Romans and stuff. And there's a scene where he's like, like his posse gets bigger. Oh, every, yeah. Every scene. And they start fighting them and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, we have the crippled and like um, the weak and the elderly and the poor. This will, this will be our army, you know? Mm. And that, then he goes into the thing like the, the meek will inherit the earth. Um, which is, it, it's just like, that's literally, like Marx would have pulled a lot from that stuff, you know, yeah. pretty much like directly <laughs> yeah. from uh, a lot of those Bible verses. Because um, that's nearly all it is. Like, you know, uh, bring it down to the the leveling universality. That's mm-hmm. that's the great thing about Christianity. I think, uh, just like you know, it should be everyone, everyone equal under God's eyes. And yeah. all that stuff you know, and uh, bring it down to the the common denominator: the weak, the elderly, the poor. All that. Yeah, stuff. it's I done lo- very well in this film. Like yeah. Jesus is proper. You're like, go on, oh, go on, yeah. Jesus, like, get in there. Like, yo, yeah, yeah, go for it. You know, like this, he's just a fucking you know hippie talking about love and stuff. Like he's proper. Like yeah, he's it's the contradictions. One minute he's talking about love and like peace and stuff like that, and but he's also picking up the axe and he's like, "We need yeah. to use this to take them down." Yeah, yeah. There's uh, another side to it. Yeah. Even like, uh, even like, I've always loved that. The, with the I don't know how to describe it. That the, the thing that he did, I don't you know the the event where like in this one it's Mary Magdalene. I don't know if it is. I don't know if it is in the Bible and stuff like that. Uh. But like men are like. Uh, about to stone uh, Mary to death, mm. and he walks in, and I just love the thing. Is just like he who who ha- like who here has not sinned, or he who have not never sinned, throw the first stone. Yeah, I love that because you, oh, you can see it. it coming. You're like ah, uh, and he gets it because it's like I know this line. Yeah, <laughs> that's the line. <laughs> it's done really well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, one fellow walks up and he's just like Jesus calls me. I was like, you're getting around real well with that widow, aren't you? <laughs> You fair calls this guy out. Yeah, he was like, "All right, fair enough." <laughs> yeah, he's just like, "Fuck's sake, don't say that." It's like bad out, man. He's like, "Who's that? Who's that? Uh, who's that widow?" And someone else is like, "Judea." And he's like, "Yeah, Judea. Yeah, you like her, don't yeah, you?" Yeah, it's it's so comical. Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, just something because like the way that I was taught that, and I don't know if it in Judaism do they have the same thing where like you're born with original sin, or is that just a Christianity thing? Uh, I think that's a Catholic thing. Yeah, I think yeah, is I think it? you're yeah, because the way that we were taught was um, in we're religion. All fucked. Is, oh no, Calvinism is, is the same. Yeah, you're, you're, it's. I, uh, I think it is total think, depravity. You're 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 constantly fucked. Yeah, I basically. think. I how did Christianity end up like that? If like you listen to what Jesus said, how did we end up like with this? But anyway, I've no idea. Um, but like when Jesus, because the way I was always taught was like. Uh, he who is who has never sinned, throw the first stone. Mm. Is like is blasphemy if you do throw a sin because we're all born with original sin. Mm. But they didn't believe that back then, so that was what I was taught was not right. Essentially, <laughs> yeah, he was just talking about like everyone does bad stuff. Yeah, it's not 
you're not born with it. It's just you're gonna sin. Obviously, yeah. everyone sins. Everyone you know? sins. You know, and it's okay. It's impossible not to sin. Yeah, like mixing linens and stuff is a sin. You know. Yeah, it's so it's man. Some of looking <laughs> at looking at images is a sin. All that stuff. Having a cross is a sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worshiping wow. icons. Yeah, it's all a sin, bro. But yeah, it's a it's a, it's an interesting take on the. Uh, it just kind of. It was a new. I think I was just really ignorant about Christianity. I think. I think or the Bible, sorry. Man, like the more like l- more you learn about actual Jesus, yeah, the more Christianity makes so much more sense. Mm. Oh, and then yeah. it's, then it's just like. If you just don't listen to the church, <laughs> Christianity is much more easy to vibe with. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I've I vibe more and more with Protestantism these days. You know, <laughs> the uh, the personal reading of the Bible. You know, mm. like they were dead, right? Luther, I'm not a fan of him, but like, if you just read the Bible, like it just makes a lot of sense. Mm. I haven't read the Bible now. Yeah. But, um, oh yeah. The parts that I have read, it's like this is just like, you know. You can't really argue with it. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's it is it it does it, like it makes great points and stuff. And the parables are already cool. Um but I, yeah, it's yeah. it's all kind of corrupted by the the church. But that that would have been the same thing that you know, I'm going to sound like a fucking uh, Luther here, but like that's what Jesus would have that's preached against. Said, yeah. yeah, the institutions are kind of the the old uh, satanic mills and stuff like that kind of dictating what the people believe. Yeah, it's so it's and like this is it's so weird that that happens across like everything, because like just to, even in terms of like you know, um, in like in the American Constitution, which I guess can be taken as the word of God in terms of like you know American found the foundation of America. Mm. That shit was meant to be torn up and revitalized every so often, <laughs> mm, yeah. um, and they just never did. And it's a similar thing with like they just dictated that this is the way this is the way things are. Mm. And it's a similar thing with the church, like no, no, this is this is the universal truth. And you can't question it. The same way, like, the perfect movie... <laughs> in terms of films, mm. The Godfather is the best movie ever made. And if you question that, that's blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Church of uh, Kino, mm. of cinematography. Yeah. It's kind of better, though, because if, if they, like, added more stuff to the Bible every year, like, you just have, like, you know... They'd add, like, private property and stuff in. And they'd be like, uh, you know... Um, Why don't we update the Bible? As in terms of, like... They'd be like, trade unions are blasphemous. Yeah. Um, you know, the right to profit is a, is a you know, a fucking uni- moral. A universal <laughs> yeah. moral imperative, you know? The the, uh, the Ten Commandments gets updated every so often. <laughs> yeah, they, li- they literally would, yeah. They'd be like, yeah, it's okay. Thou shalt not eat the rich. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. thou shalt not kill unless they're uh, Muslims or hate, uh, yeah. hate uh, Christianity and stuff. It's like, nah. It's kind of... It, the ten rules, it's, they're all pretty clear-cut, you know? Yeah. Leave it as it is. Where does... um. Because, again, I, I, this, this film genuinely had me thinking, like, man, I should try and read bits of the New Testament just to, like, mm. understand what's going on. Um, okay, so the New Testament obviously ends with Armageddon, basically. I don't know what the term is in the book. What is the final chapter of the, of the Bible? I have absolutely no idea. What's it called in fucking in Christianity? Oh, my God. Revelation? No. It must of, be. Uh, is it the book of Revelations? Is that not the first? No, that's Genesis, isn't it? Yeah, you're right. Am I right? The last right? book, yeah, it's book of Revelations. <laughs> oh, damn, man, you've been reading up. I know, yeah. <laughs> Saw that Catholic guilt coming up again. Yeah, yeah. Um, Got our Gideon's Bibles on hand. Well, yeah, um, the so like okay, so obviously, what happens in the New Testament between Jesus dying and like coming back? And all those all that shenanigans with the with the apostles, and between that and the end of the world as the the book of Revelations, what's in between that? This. What do you mean this? Right now. So there are parables. That doesn't make sense. But I, sorry, you've actually confused me even <laughs> more now. <laughs> <laughs> but like, what's written in between? I don't know. What do they? That's I have no idea. Yeah, that confuses me so much because I. It's not just straight into the apocalypse now. I, I don't know. Yeah. I I've never read because it. Because I think that the, the New Testament, as far as far as I'm aware, the story of Jesus is in the f- four Gospels. Mm. But the New Testament is like 20, 26, chap- 26 books, just like that. Yeah. So that's four things that are cover up the story of Jesus. So I'm sure there's a few other bits to cover up Jesus as well. Mm. And then there's like, what, 12 chapters and then the book of Revelations? What's in those 12 chapters? Yes, yeah, so you had the four Gospels, the Acts of the Apostles. 
the 13 Pauline epistles, the what epistle the to the Hebrews. What the fuck is that? The seven general epistles and the book of Revelation, which is its own thing, apparently. What in the name of God is covered? Literally, what in the name of God <laughs> is covered in that? <laughs> <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Um, the, actually, the apostles, I def- we, I've definitely... Yeah, I've definitely I've, heard yeah, that. Yeah, we've definitely read that in religion and stuff. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure about the epistles. Uh, they're probably the less popular ones. Mm. Um yeah, I'm not sure what happens in between. Is it just like what the apostles and all, what, what the followers of Jesus got up to? <laughs> it's like fucking. It's like an epilogue. <laughs> it's like an '80s movie after the freeze frame. <laughs> it's like Paul was crucified upside down <laughs> in Rome. <laughs> Judas hung himself from a willow tree. <laughs> it's like oh yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> bow, bow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, it, yeah. You know, the freeze frames are like Jesus, like Peter went on to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They should make a Bible movie like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows what they got up to? Because I've like I've no idea. Even like the it's it's the New Testament shorter than the Old Testament. I've no idea. <laughs> I feel like it has to be. <laughs> I don't know. The Old Testament is just like. The Torah, no, no, yeah. I'm wrong. No, I think you're right. I think the I think the the Old Testament is like that's just pure Judaism. I'm sure there's more stuff in the Torah though. Mm. It, Christianity is basically just Judaism. Yeah, two point Yeah, and then Islam is just Christianity three point Yeah, or Judaism. 3.0. We're really behind the times, by fifteen hundred years behind the times. What's in the Quran? Like, is Jesus in the... Obviously, Jesus... Obviously, no, oh, okay. Jesus is in the Quran. He yeah. is, but, like, the stories of Jesus isn't, obviously, as in-depth. I don't think so, no. See, mm. they, they're all named from the stuff as well. Mm. Isa. Uh, sure, that, I'm sure that's a, his actual fucking name, like. I think his name was um, Yeshua. Yeshua. In his own time. But, oh, yeah, sure. Uh, it would have been a Jewish name, yeah. Yeah, It would have yeah. been a fucking Islamic name. Uh-huh. Arab name or, or Arab whatever, name, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think Quran, Quran just goes on about Muhammad and stuff. His adventures, which are a bit... Grizzlier, but um, yeah, it, Jesus is mentioned a few points and Moses and stuff. They 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 take quite a bit from the Bible, but the Bible obviously is also taking quite a bit from the Torah and stuff. So, man of Judaism is just where all this came from. Oh, they took from before that as well. And yeah, they took before that. Yeah. Mad. The monotheists. Religion you know? is so interesting. Yeah, it actually religion. really it really is. It's kind of slept on these days because uh, you know, it has a, has a bad rep. Bad rep, but it's mad interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's just a branch of philosophy, isn't it? Really is. Yeah. Um, do excuse me. Do other religions take little bits from like does does Buddhism or like Taoism or like Hinduism take stuff from us or does it just our own, or us? I mean, like you know the poly, the mono the, the trilogy, the, the Abrahamic yeah. lads. Do they take stuff from <laughs> us? From oh, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> do they take stuff from the Abrahamic religions? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they don't. Hinduism and Buddhism, like they're their own yokes, you know. They're real. They're older than Christianity. I'm pretty sure. Well, I don't think Buddhism is. Maybe I think, I think is. Hinduism is really, really old. Mm. You know, what's the oldest religion? Let's look that up now. What is the Zoroastrianism? Yeah, some fucking mad pagan religion. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, damn it. I rearranged uh, my apps on my phone, so every time I want to go go into Google, I end up clicking the fucking camera app. <laughs> <laughs> what's the? Okay, what's your bet now? What's the oldest religion? Zoroastrianism. Uh, if you're right, I'm gonna Hinduism. Oh, which religion came first? Hinduism is the world's oldest religion. How old is it? More than four thousand years old. Holy moly! How old is Judaism then? <laughs> no idea. Man, I wish yeah, I who, knew. Who founded Judaism? I was literally about to say that. Where did Judaism come from? Johnny Jew. Judaism. Uh, how old? Judaism is okay. Ju- so Hinduism has five hundred years on Judaism. Oh, really? Yeah, three and a half thousand years. The origins of Judaism date back more than three th- three thousand five hundred years. The religion is rooted in the ancient Near Eastern region of Canaan, which today constitutes of Israel and Palestine territories. Judaism emerged from the beliefs and practices of the people known as Israel. Mad. Mm. Judaism is mad. They have so like so many 
They started this whole monotheism bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is their fault. But they have uh, like so many like ancient books and like ideas. Mm, yeah. That are just like not passed on at all. There's a whole like uh, I remember like reading or like watching like a few YouTube documentaries on and stuff like that. They have like books and stuff like that that like you're not allowed to translate or something like that. Really? There's like hidden ancient secrets in them and stuff like that. What? Yeah, I can't. That's that's a bit silly. There's it's like different uh, levels of like Judaism or so. It's like Scientology. Oh man, I'm like, I'm like <laughs> this is me like going on a fucking YouTube hold like two years ago and now I'm trying <laughs> yeah. to remember what it was. This is pure lockdown brain coming out. Um, yeah. I remember like looking at stuff about it. They have, Judaism is really interesting, like really old Judaism. Mm. Um, there's, there's loads of different branches and stuff. Even like in terms of like, um, I think there's, I'm fairly certain that there's giants in the Bible. There's yeah. m- there's mention to giants mm. and uh, the other thing that's in Judaism and I don't know if it's in Christianity is the like the depiction of angels. What do you mean? Not like written, but like the the wording depict. You know, like the realistic angels, mm. like the thousand eyes and stuff like that. Mm. Pretty sure that comes from Judaism, but I might have that wrong. That could be no. Wait, that's yeah, yeah. That's by that is the Bible. That's in somewhere in Christianity as well. Yeah, but there's like two versions. I think they're described because there's like the Bible realistic ones, which you see in the meme and stuff. Mm-hmm. But there's also like a different version where it is just wings and stuff, mm. and they look like cherubs. Yeah, there's uh, there's you like. Know? I think there's there's different uh, there's nine different angels, yeah. nine different levels of angels who are like it's the same with demons as well. There's loads of different types of demons. Yeah, you know, some are like wind. Like a lot, a lot of them in the Bible aren't like you know like people with like or fellas we know like uh, like horns mm-hmm. and like tails and stuff like that. It's like it's like like wind and like uh, oils and like w- like kind of like uh, disembodied spirits and stuff like that it's not really it's not just it's like it's it's really horrifying mm. i read i read a book about it like it's like the horror uh, it was like the philosophy of horror but it had it had a part on on uh uh demons like demonology in the bible yeah there's a youtuber called windigo is that his name he did a, a video on i think it's bible conspiracy theories or something like that Something like that, mm. and some of them are fucking mental. Like what? Uh, like the different types of angels, the different types of the giants coming in. Uh, some of it I just like full on just don't understand because I don't know what because I was never taught that parts mm. of the Bible. Essentially, he's talking about the parts of the Bible that you're not really taught. Yeah. Like, well, it, why do they never read the Bible in school? Why do they not talk about the really cool parts of the Bible? Yeah, yeah. You know why? Why are they the why parts is, in hell and stuff, revelations. The parts actually apply to real Wind- life. Windagoon. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. This will be on the. Yeah, Windagoon's video will be up on the inst- on the Twitter. Very uh, informative. Go, go check it out. Yeah, the nine different types of angels and stuff like that, which yeah. are all theories. Mad. Will we move on to some listener questions? Cause let's I just realize the time and also how far into this episode we are. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. If you want to ask us a question, you can hit us up on Instagram or on Twitter at paro underscore pod, or you can send us a email, theparopod at gmail.com. Our first question is coming in from James, and James is asking us a doozy of a question. So, James says, See how during the 80s and 90s, a lot of protagonists in movies were from working class backgrounds and the bad guys were usually the upper middle class. For example, Karate Kid, Bean Bean Aaron Brockovich, etc. to name a few. Why do you think this has turned in the last couple of years? To contrast the commitments with Sing Street or the Rocky franchise of Creed or Modern Family with Malcolm in the Middle? Um, it's a banging point. That is, a, yeah, that's a huge point. Very, very well made. Um, I think it's just there's a lot. It goes far beyond media, anyway. Yeah, far beyond that. Because you look at uh, Malk in the middle, Linwood Boomer. I think is the guy who named. I might have got that name wrong, but that's the guy who, uh, the showrunner from Malk in the Middle. That show is based on his actual life. Um, he was Malcolm. Of course. Hints <laughs> yeah. um, of the genius. Yeah, he was the genius in the uh, working class family. So he grew up in a working class family and he wrote about his experiences. But he's like he's like 70 now-ish, so he's like a boomer. Mm. And it'd be the same, for, like Matt Groening, son of immigrants. 
um, wrote about... But now we're mad rich. <laughs> now he's a billionaire who hangs out with Epstein and stuff, um, or did. But um, he was... He grew up in a working class family. Um, one that maybe isn't really applicable here, but like Roseanne, Roseanne Barr, mm. comedian. Had yeah. The huge show Roseanne. Hugely influential, popular in America. She was very much a working class kind of uh, person. So mm. I think she's also the daughter of immigrants and stuff. Uh, funnily enough, her, she was actually Roseanne. The show was actually revived. I didn't know this at all. I'd never watched Roseanne really. I've never I've, heard I've only, of it. <laughs> really? Yeah, it, it was huge in America. <clears throat> I'd see every now and then. It used to be on like like Dave and stuff. <laughs> and Dave so, Gold. And yeah, stuff like that. It, it'd randomly on, and I, I wouldn't watch it, but like it, it would be there in the background. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But um, it was actually revived in 2017 as a result of uh, it was a post election day um, kind of meeting. Uh, boardroom meeting at like NBC or something mm-hmm. whatever studio produced it uh, and they wanted to reach out um, to demographics that they believe had kind of been f- like left behind mm-hmm. and so that demographic was the working class pretty much and they believed that Roseanne appealed to that kind of no way yeah yeah so that's it only survived one season and then it got cancelled because she made some anti-Semitic remark apparently on uh, Twitter <laughs> <laughs> but who doesn't <laughs> you know but <laughs> No, no. Who doesn't these days? No, but um, yeah, she got cancelled anyway. And uh, but like that's like relative, to, like something like Modern Family, you know. Mm. If you think about that, the guy who did that is his dad was like the fucking head of ABC or something. Yeah, and um, like he wasn't, he he was not a normal person. He didn't grow up in a normal family. He grew up yeah. rich, pretty yeah. much. Um, it's the same with the guy who did uh, uh, Big Bang Theory mm-hmm. and Christopher Lloyd. Or I, I might have the other way around. I think the guy did Modern Family. He he was his his dad was some kind of executive. But the guy who did Big Bang Theory and Young Sheldon. He his dad was the head of ABC. Mm. His dad was a screenwriter. His dad like was like uh, his dad made the way to get his son in. Yeah, yeah. Basically, mm. these two guys, these two showrunners, are the biggest sitcoms of the past ten years, pretty much. Um, Parks and Rec as well. All the showrunners of those shows were not normal people. They did not grow up. In working class families, yeah, they did not grow up in that kind of. In, they did not grow up as like normal people do. Yeah, they grew up rich, and so that's their output reflects that. Yeah. So like Parks and Rec, it's about a bureaucrat, civil servant, who you know does her best, and it's all kind of quirky and stuff. Funny show. Same with Modern Family as well. Um, Young Sheldon, I can't say enough about that. Or like, <laughs> that's a different kind of thing. I think I've watched a second of, Lo- of Young Sheldon. Yeah, obviously it's dog shit, but like, it's you can see why or it's a, it's a way of kind of thinking about why those shows are so different in terms of representation than what yeah, you see the before people are making them yeah yeah even like you have like representation Do there's more and more can... sensitivity about like racial representation stuff yeah. like that but a lot of the re- racial representation isn't doesn't reflect working cl- like actual class no demographics yeah no it doesn't. if there's a show about black people a lot of times it's about rich black people mm-hmm. or black people are like becoming rich and stuff like that mm-hmm. and it's written by people who are rich themselves mm-hmm. you know maybe they're black and stuff but it doesn't reflect like, realities where like hollywood is always been like very elitist and like all these show runners and stuff that have always been like the upper echelon at some point but like it's becoming even more condensed in terms of like it's becoming even more elite and more mm. oh yeah yeah it's, yeah it's more and more cloistered but i don't think it's necessarily damn that's doing it it's just the way... It's just naturally happening, I guess. It's, it's the way things have kind of panned out, I think, in the last 50 years. In America, specifically. It doesn't, yeah. obviously doesn't apply really here or in Europe, really. <clears throat> um, but, like, it was so much it, it was so much more socially mobile. Also, there's way less studios now. Yeah, yeah. It, it's more consolidated mm. stuff. It's, it's more... Like, it's all, you know, people say it's all about, like, who you know and stuff. But it was actually easier back in the day to rise yeah. from like say like a random uh, comic strip writer like Matt Groening mm-hmm. to be a showrunner of the biggest TV show in the world nowadays that like that does not that has not happened at all that does no. not happen no that would never happen it's not because oh you know the culture is different these days it's actually just like structurally there are so many more barriers in place to mm-hmm. actually for that to actually happen it's harder to move like in if you're born in the 50s you're gonna have a better life than your parents did because mm-hmm. you're a boomer and there's a lot more opportunity nowadays that since the 80s that's just not true you're mm-hmm. not gonna that's like across the board pretty much globally unless you're in china or like uh the third world you're 
it's that's not you know a rule mm -hmm. whereas before it used to be i think that's where it kind of comes from it's kind of like it's a uh, that strata the media class or whatever has like calcified to an extent that there's no new blood really coming there's in there's no getting into it the people who do get in are sanctioned they're mm -hmm. people who are like you, you you play by our rules we'll let you into the club whereas before it was a bit more merit based mm -hmm. i think yeah no i'd agree you know it'd be it'd be <clears throat> it'd be easier to kind of like build up an audience and stuff mm. um i don't like obviously youtube and stuff would and the internet would kind of impact that as well um but even like you see like mr beast like the biggest <laughs> youtuber on on earth he's just a dude that spends a bunch of money he's just a rich kid yeah who had a lot of money mm -hmm. and he used that money to make more money um so i, I think that's all it is or th not not all, it's obviously not a simple it's not answer yet. but like that's i think that's the this kind of structural yeah. basis for what's going on i'd even think like um that they're not like as tv shows they're not marketed towards working class people they are now being marketed towards the middle class yeah the, the uh consumer with extra cash yeah you know get more money off them that way yeah ads and stuff because you get more for like if <clears throat> i think the average modern family watcher is uh is worth way more to advertisers mm -hmm. than the average fucking there's not even really shows made for people who are, are literally trying to say this what, for normal people yeah who the well, like what fucking sitcom is coming out now besides young sheldon yeah yeah i, yeah, I yeah. literally can't think of one mm. um besides obviously like the ones that are like Simpsons or whatever. Like say something like Family Guy. Like the Family Guy viewer, like that's Family Guy. You know, it's like a show for the common man. Yeah, everyone can go to get into that, depending on the episode. Uh, the viewer for that is like worth way less than uh, the mm. average viewer for Modern Family. Yeah, uh, just in terms of advertising money. Um, <clears throat> so it just ma it makes more sense financially to make those kind of shows. Yeah, that appeal to the richer people. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And I think like in terms of film and stuff like that. Like the um, the Creed one is a good is a good point. The Ro Rocky franchise because like Creed is the same basic story, but like Creed is now the son of Apollo Creed. Like he's not working class, mm. and like he was already born into he's it. He's already yeah. born into wealth mm. and has like all the money to like you know get whatever whatever he needs. Um, that's like interesting. I didn't even think about that. The sitcom one is is especially a good point. I haven't seen the commitments or Sing Street, so I can't comment on that. Mm. Have you seen that? No, but mm. I know the commitments. I haven't seen Sing Street. Um, though I met the main guy, who stars in it. Yeah, I think I've seen him as well. Actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Finches. <clears throat> but um, yeah, the commitments is just pure working class mm -hmm. kind of culture, um, which you don't really see. As much, yeah. I think, I think now as well, we don't really see, um, you don't see the upper middle class be villainized, but a lot of the time, we it's much more so nowadays. The uh, the corporation or something like that is the villain, yeah. Some faceless, some faceless yeah. conglomerate. We, we also, superhero movies have, I think, like, oh, they're the worst, they're the worst for this like, by far. That is, it, there's not yeah. a single normal person. In any no. Marvel film, so like the, a single the one. The villain and also the hero are rich people. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The hero's like all this is the good type of rich person that you should support, yeah. whereas the villain is the bad type of rich person that you support. The type of rich person that wants to give money to poor people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what was it um, the guy, the villain, Vulture. or the villain in Black Panther? Oh yeah, I wasn't his whole point was just like to spread technology around the yeah, world? Yeah, I can't. Think They're of like, you can't do that, man. Yeah. That's insane. We need, we need to keep it together. Yeah, like I think like. Marvel films are like what you can see this in very blatantly. Oh, it's so and blatant, it's like yeah. completely like just destroyed cinemas. Like that's all you can mm. see in the cinema is a fucking Marvel film. Yeah, like the Spider uh, the Spider Man one doesn't really fit into that into the question, but mm. like it, I think it's a decent example. Yeah, compared to like Spider Man one, Spider Man two, Tobey Maguire versus yeah uh, Holland's. Spider -Man, Spider -Man who's is just a, is a rich a, kid. Like, he's just a fucking preppy little kid that's yeah. like, oh man, I'm, I want to be fucking... Gee whiz. Gee whiz, I want to be Iron Man's little sidekick. It's like, yeah. shut up. <laughs> or is, yeah, Tobey Maguire, he's struggling to pay rent. Yeah. You know? It's like so normal different. problems. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen Andrew Garfield's one, so I don't know where that lies in it, but that's... It's kind of in the middle. It's somewhere, yeah. I genuinely think it is somewhere in the yeah, middle. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's so, yeah, you can just, you can see, it's, yeah, it's... Grim is what it is. Yeah, they it's don't an want, interesting. They phenomenon. don't want to villainize, you know, upper middle class rich people. Or whatever. Mm, yeah, they don't want that because they can't imagine anything <clears throat> beyond that. 
That's the thing. We also have seven questions from Anna. Yeah, I know. I saw that there. <laughs> we're going to go to the mall because we're kind of running out of time. What time is your bus at? Uh, probably 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Right, we'll answer there. I'll pick a random one here. Or do you want to pick a random one? You pick a random one there. Um, who is your favorite character by the name of Joe? Move your TV. Rogan. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, uh, Rogan. Joe Mama. <laughs> <laughs> we got you, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joe, Joe from you. I think this is his name. Joey Diaz. And, Joey uh, Diaz. Spider-Man 2. You mess with him, you mess with the rest of us. We're New Yorkers. <laughs> Love it. Love it, Joey Diaz. <laughs> He's playing himself. Yeah, he just is playing himself. <laughs> I didn't even think the character is named Joey Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> he just happened to be on the train on Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't acting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he wasn't signed up. He's just yeah. an extra. Yeah, yeah, he, he just walked onto <clears> set. <throat> he yeah. thought what was happening was real. <laughs> um... Um, re character swapping, e.g. Kermit. What? Hold on. What is that one? Yeah, you pick one. You pick one. Uh, we'll call them. If you could swap any two characters from two from different movies, who would you swap? Re character swapping, e.g. Kermit and Walter White. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I am the one who knocks. <laughs> <laughs> that it. That would be good. Yeah. Um, I want. Uh, I'm trying to think of something. I want Rust Cole and Big Bang Theory replacing Sheldon. Uh, <laughs> 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 I want, yeah, I want Sheldon in True Detective. <laughs> <laughs> Bazinga! <laughs> After she find- was stabbed seven times. Once <laughs> <laughs> he finds you know the two kids in the in the container, he's like Bazinga! It's like, <laughs> fucking Woody Allen just kicks the piss out of him. I was like, what are you doing? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a good. One. I'm trying to think of. Oh, um, I want, um, I want, um, I want Mickey Mouse in a razor head. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. Yeah. <laughs> I want him to be your like, I'm so afraid of being a father. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you afraid of? <laughs> I can't handle it. <laughs> Who's that in the radio? <laughs> what happened to the baby? <laughs> Will you stop crying? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Oh, that'd oh, be good. God damn. That'd be good. Well, we leave it at that. We'll leave it there. I know we'll answer the rest of your questions in the next episode. We we actually will. We actually will. What's your recommended film? My recommended film? film for episode 99. Ooh. Oh. That's a big number. Is uh, The Stone Tape. The Stone Tape. The Stone Tape is a 1973 BBC television play directed by a guy called Neil. That's N. Sorry. K N E L. E- Did you say 1973? A-L-E. Yeah, ish. Ooh, 73 grand. Cool. That's Stone Tape, 1973. Stone tape. Okay. BBC Play for today. Ooh, that sounds it's good. It's actually not, but it is a play. That sounds a good. television play. Tied in with um, the BBC Radiophonic work- Workshop, possibly. I still have to watch the film, so we'll see. Yeah, we'll see if it's good or not. <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah, well. We'll leave it at that. It'll be good, anyway. Good night. God bless. Bye. Good night.